I just realized, though. Phone number 877-212-ONA. Mm. It sucks. Mm-hmm. Well, we're going to talk about the virus show, so let's start with Gambit from New York. Gambit, you're the first call of the week. What's up, buddy? Hey, I just want to say it was the best time that I've had in years at this virus show. But I also wanted to inquire to him about a certain jewelry accoutrement a gentleman wearing a Back to the Future shirt presented him with when he arrived. Oh, I was so thrilled. I got a um, a Hill Valley High School um, a graduation ring. Since, you know, I didn't get one from my own high school. Yeah. I got a nice one from Hill Valley High, which, of course, is, a, you know, Back to the Future. Yeah. And somebody gave it to me, and I, I thought it was uh, very good. Thank you. You were wearing it on your wedding ring finger. Well, I was just wearing it on one the finger that fit. I know, but that got some people talking. They're like, what's up with the, the, the ring on Anthony's wedding ring finger? I'm like, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know what the hell's going on with him. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. It gave me that. I like gifts from the listeners. Very, very nice. Well, Especially uh, funny ones. Well, everyone is saying uh, the phones are lit already. Look, we can take one. We'll take another one. Justin in Jersey. Justin, what's up? Hey, what's going on, guys? Hey, man. Hey, man. I was at the show on Saturday, and uh, can I tell you, it was the greatest comedy show I've ever seen in my entire life. Oh, very good. I'm glad you enjoyed it, because that, uh, that was the last one as well. <laughs> was it? I want to make it official. That was the last ONA virus show ever. Well, um, Because it's gotten really to the point. Uh, well, thank you, Justin. Well, Justin, what was your favorite part before we get into this? Uh... When Jimmy, uh, right before Jimmy came on stage, when we all blew, blew that one guy off the stage. <laughs> well, that was his favorite part. <laughs> Hence, the last virus show you guys will ever see. Oh. Because we cannot, uh, we cannot turn the listeners around no. to the point where they, they, they can understand what we're trying to do here. Like, we invite these comedians in mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. our house, the right. ONA community. They are friends of Anthony and I's. Uh-huh. They are friends of the show. We pick guys that we think people will enjoy, and then the audience, because they don't like somebody, turns around and boos the and hell out of them. Viciously. Viciously uh, boos them. them. And here's another thing. And they don't understand in the end what that does, and we're going to get into this today. Here's here's another uh, thing. They, uh, we, we got, like, complaints when we first announced the tour. Before we announced uh, any new comics that were coming on, right? From people going, you know, it's the same lineup. Where am I going to go again and see Patrice and Jimmy? It's, it's like, uh, no, we'll get some some other guys in there. The second we bring someone new on stage, these jackasses just pounce like hyena. First of all, they boo us. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and yeah. they still boo the yeah. the guys. Patrice is doing has been doing our show for what six to eight years. Oh my god! <laughs> and he's scared to go in front of uh, the ONA crowd. It really is. And <laughs> and let me go with what Anthony said. As we were trying to get comedians uh, this year for the ONA uh, comedy show, a lot of well known comics said no to this show. Yes. And the reason they said no, it it, it came up over and over again was because they were scared S-less of our audience. Yeah, they don't want that to stand in fact. front of there and, and get pounded. And we're talking about well-known comedians that turn around, I don't even want to give names today, that said, no effing way am I doing that show. So these idiots that that think it's so cool to boo the comedians, or one comedian, we almost had a good show. We almost had a perfect show. Everything was going great. Mike Birbiglia went on stage, and uh, once again... They started booing before they gave the guy a chance. And that's that's my biggest complaint with this whole thing. Oh. If you give a guy a few minutes and then you don't like him, you know what? I, I can't tell you not to boo. But what, what, I, but what I can tell people is why are you booing before you give some of these guys a chance? Right. In our house. It's our house. <laughs> and when I say our house, I mean the fans, Anthony and I, the rest of the comedians. Our house. Just imagine you, like, uh, have someone over for Thanksgiving. You invite them into your house, and then as they're trying to eat turkey, you're like, Boo! Get out! But but you invited me here. And they they were welling up. Huh? They were welling up because they just, it was just 10,000 innate boors in there anyway. <clears throat> yeah. And, and and they were just welling up, dude. And and here's the deal with uh, Mike Birbiglia. The video of him getting booed is up on YouTube, and people are checking it out. The message boards are going crazy over it. Mike Birbiglia is a well-established comedian. 
I saw him in Central Park killing in front of 2,000 people. Killing. Yeah. And uh, our audience decided, nah, we're not even going to give him a chance. Well, who, who, who's this open micer coming out? We're not even going to give him a chance. What, is he a contest winner? I think he's a K-Rock contest winner. They decided to give <laughs> a local comedian a few minutes just before Jim Norton closed the show. Oh, we don't want to acknowledge this guy. Let's 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 boo him to death. So, unfortunately, uh, with that, I got to I got to announce that uh, we just did our last comedy show. Our last comedy That's show. Nice. I mean, we'll do the smaller ones, maybe. Or if Patrice is playing Caroline's, we might get up on stage and go, "Hey, everybody!" I'm just sitting and watching. <laughs> yeah, I ain't getting up anymore. <laughs> Screw it. You know, you know what it is. Uh, and, and the comics, you could see it backstage <clears throat> when they all come in. There's this pall over everything. There's just this uh, infectious <laughs> cloud of who's it going to be. You believe in God? I yeah. believe in God. You believe in God? I believe in God, too. You love Jesus? I do. I do love Jesus. I do. Yeah, they, they're all talking. They're all milling around backstage, and it's not this lighthearted thing. It's They're looking at each other like, someone's someone's dying tonight. Someone's dying. And it's uh, all it reminds me of these days is... is when like Proximo gave the speech to <laughs> yeah. the gladiators yeah. in in Gladiator, and just as your mother was there at your beginning, I shall be there at your end. And when you bomb, and bomb you shall, your transition will be to the sounds of "Boo, you suck! Get off the stage, comedians! I salute you." <laughs> Can any of you make jokes? <laughs> <laughs> Have any of you done comedy before? Yes, I opened for you at Caroline's. Stick together! <laughs> Stick together! <laughs> it was just, I swear to you, that's the atmosphere. Yeah. You just don't want your mother to get that call. No. Knock on the door with your folded flag. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got some bad news. Let's uh, <laughs> go. Stick, stick together. Stick together. That's but that's what it's like backstage. It's like yeah. underneath the Coliseum. Sure. And, and <laughs> just waiting to pop up and get a big mace in your face the second you come out. Comedian, I, what's your name? <laughs> and as every as each uh, comedian got off the stage and came back came backstage whatever they were pretty much crying like i made it i yeah. made it they, they made it me. oh thank god hugs you know how to be like <laughs> kind of helped off into the uh back into the green room uh, one guy on each arm just helping him helping him back to the green room like he's a wounded soldier a spider web <laughs> tattoo right. i gotta look at in the daytime <laughs> yeah I, mean, I go on in the daytime and the, yeah when there's sunshine out yeah there's still sun out just i'm looking dude you and i'm just looking at these guys with spider web tattoos dude. eyeballs yeah <laughs> these people who, who i don't even read the message boards anymore but you know they're there <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Those haters. You know what's but pathetic? But there's somebody have to focus. You, I looked at Greg Giraldo, and it's like you don't want, when there's comics that's been doing comedy forever, mm -hmm. you don't want to look at him and go, hey, kid, here's some advice. Yeah. I've yeah. like 47 of them. <laughs> I go, listen to me. Focus. That's mm -hmm. my advice. Because you're go something's going to be happening, a beach ball, a raping, um, <laughs> a raping 10 yeah. booings up above. The, the air horns, mm -hmm. you suck, dude. How about, it's gonna happen? How about the air horn? I go to Pete. I'm like, uh, you know, there's a guy out there with an air horn, <laughs> kind of disturbing every single comedian. And Pete goes, yeah, I know, it's, it's, it's kind of cool. <laughs> it's, he goes, it's kind of cool. It's kind of cool, like People you know, know, because he's not doing it during the jokes, just as a punchline. Like it's kind of cool. Punchline. How about the comic does the punchline? Cool? That was kind of cool. I'm never doing one of those again. That's what I find. I'd love cool. to go to where that guy works and just blow an air right. horn as he's trying to friggin' fill out his TPS reports. It's kind of cool. Faggot. Don't you think it's kind of cool? I'm like, no, it's disturbing the comedians. It's oh, not kind of cool. People who've never done comedy sick of me. Just, hey, it's, what's the yeah, problem? Yeah. Be yeah. funny. Yeah. Go ahead. Hey, uh. Funny man. When somebody 57 is showing your, their breasts while you're on. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Let me just focus through this 15 minutes while somebody's grandmother wants her Otto and George t-shirt. She shows you those, those rotten pieces. 
Utters. A, uh, <laughs> uh, getting, getting back to, like, as we were trying to get this lineup together, and a lot of guys that, uh, a few guys that did the show in, in years past and had a good time, they just said no way because yep. they couldn't handle the pressure and the buildup leading to the show, wondering if uh, these asses are going to boo them. And, That's and, what it is. And then we started getting weird uh, excuses, like, uh, uh, so, uh, you know, could you do the comedy show, uh, you know, for us at the PNC? He goes, no, 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 I got uh, I got, uh, I got a set of chuckles I got to do in, in Akron, Ohio. I'm like, what? Why would you go to chuckles in Akron, Ohio, making up a you know, comedy name here, instead of playing in front of 10,000 people? Because they're not going to get the equivalent of a shovel in the face. <laughs> I'd rather do 47 <laughs> shows at Chuckle. Right. Than the one Dude. 15 minutes. And I saw a few in, in Montreal, by the way, yeah. remain nameless, yeah. who were almost saying, hey, I was supposed to do that, but it was almost like, hey, but I had to do something else. But they left out the the, the detail of thank God. Yeah. I yeah. had something else to do. What you have to do? Uh, I had to buy some bubble gum. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> very busy. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's Saskatchewan. In the comedy world, it's, it's becoming the thing. These guys are all chattering among yeah. themselves and like, you're, you're, you're doing the show? What are you, insane? You're crazy. I can't believe you're actually going to try to do that. And then another guy uh, gave us an excuse. A big time comedian is like, ah, I got a black party that weekend. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, all right, something's well, up. Go for it. Here's Sonny Ferrelli from uh, Boston, Massachusetts. Sonny! Hey, guys, what's happening, man? Hey, man. Good I seeing you on what. Saturday. What's up, Sonny? I I'll tell you, I was thoroughly, thoroughly disgusted. And, and, Patrice, I just want to correct you a little bit. You said you, you did mention about the mes message borders. For the most part, it, it wasn't the message borders this time. That's <clears> them. I just want to say that. If I, I mean, I have to give support. credit. I have to give credit to this is what I mean. Why, when I say focus, there are. If, they, I think it was the most I ever seen at the PNC it was completely filled. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, I, it was crazy. Yeah, like, real rock concert type of thing. The most because I guess it's not spread out anymore. So people are coming from everywhere. Yeah. in that tri-state or whatever, and th the focus means there are going to be about two thousand. <laughs> That hate you, right? And nine thousand that love you. So focus on the nine thousand, right? So, I, so it seems no, like okay. we're trashing the entire just, audience. Hold but on, the, Sonny. those people, you, you seem like you're trashing the entire audience. It's not. It's just two thousand people that you have to focus out and give a great performance of people that mm -hmm. seen you twenty five times and know you well enough to go. Ah, Patrice wasn't on top of his game today. Or Bobby wasn't on top of his game today. Or wow, they were great today. Yep. Even due to the fact of beach balls and air horns and you suck and old ladies. <laughs> That's what I mean. So the ones that were great, I, I say they were the best. Let me just to say this: the best crowd ever, other than two years ago at the PNC. This is the number one you really audience. Like the audience huh? They were beautiful. They were material. I mean, Brewer was doing stuff about his kids. And they were beautiful. Yeah. But <laughs> it, they were good for that crowd. Right on. Uh, Sonny, what were you saying? We don't know who booed. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not saying it was the message boarders. I'm not oh. saying it's the satellite radio crew. I'm not saying it's regular radio. I have no idea. But the fact uh, remains that all the people that went to the show on Saturday know the this radio show pretty well and know that we were – pretty much telling everyone could you do us a, a favor and not boo the comedians because we're really trying to you know keep this thing going past this year and at this point we have to say there's that that was the last virus show there's no way we could do this anymore no <laughs> comedians were saying no to us that should not be saying no to us you could do it again and that's why it was, it was the seasoned veterans that we brought to the PNC. We only we brought the best of the best. The you, seasoned vets. No yeah. joke, man. You guys you guys have that have been audition. doing this radio show for eight to ten years. You guys have to audition. Well, like I, like I wrote on like I wrote on the message boards. All right, for those who did boo Mike Birbiglia, all right, a big f you. You're an effing douche, and you should go suck your father's bleed. Oh Jesus! After he's after he after your fat fellow trash mother that got AIDS from. Effing the family dog. Okay? He so said the F word, word yeah. and then said bleep yeah. in place of ass. Yeah, I know. You are right, a it. dummy. Sonny, go away. <laughs> but thank you, Sonny. I know Sonny was not <laughs> happy. <laughs> I know Sonny wasn't happy with uh, what went on with the booing with Mike Birbiglia. And we were starting to feel pretty good. We're like, oh, my God. 
It was it's, it's happening. Oh my god, we're making it. We're making. We're gonna it. get through this. The audience is loving it because that's the that's the feeling backstage. Like. I don't. Th okay, I think I think we're gonna get through this. And I start hearing booing, and uh, I come like, out to the uh, backstage area, but I can't see who's on stage. And then all it is, it's like it's this thing. I go up to open, go, who's who's out there? He <laughs> yeah. goes, he goes, Perpiglia. I'm like, oh, he's. It's like, oh, Perpiglia is getting it. It's like watching an old war movie. Who's who's out there in the brush? It's Kowalski. <laughs> right. They got Kowalski. In in in, fa <laughs> in fairness to Perpiglia, there's no one. Under when they get a fat one at the O and A shows, nobody, it's no one laughs, and no one goes aha. Uh -huh. It's just no. you you bring them in and you and you go you you give them those that shot of Novocaine and, yep. and you try to put his guts back in. And you, <laughs> yeah, and you it's medic. Them, and you take him to the chopper. Yeah. <laughs> to the <Yeah>. chopper. <laughs> <laughs> the chopper. The chopper. The chopper. That's what I was, that was. That's what I was sort of saying after they left the stage. They. have they look like they needed a medic. Nobody, like, after that, it's just like no one, you, you know, Billy took that thing and made it into some incredible. And that's what know, I think everyone's moment. trying to recreate. And it's like, it ain't going to happen, gonna dummies. Happen. That was magic what right. Billy did. Yeah. Magic. It can't yeah. happen again. No. It's funny because uh, a few people on the phones, I think one of our own guys, Butcher, just wrote that about the sweatshirt, right? They're trying to t they're trying to justify why they booed Mike Birbiglia at the big show on Saturday night at the PNC. They're basically saying we booed him because he walked out on stage with a hoodie on and it was a hundred degrees out. Well, all right, boo away. <laughs> That's what boo they, away then. This is what we're up against. This is why I feel I feel good saying that we did the last virus show. We did fourteen or fifteen of those. I was trying to uh, count last night. I think fifteen. It's a, it's over. It's done. That information is, done. is pertinent, by the way, because I was going to wear a suit jacket. So they would have booed me due to that information. Oh, my God, a suit jacket. <laughs> Hi, how are you people? Hey, Patrice. Actually, Sir Patrice here. Hi, guy. <laughs> Part of the YouTube video of Mike Birbigley getting booed, and we'll we'll link it on <laughs> oandayradio.com. Uh, one of the guys, Mike Birbigley, decided to ask why they're booing. So God bless him. He went in the crowd. And one guy goes, because you're wearing a sweats, a hoodie. <laughs> A God. giant killer, by the way. <laughs> that guy is. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here doing the cross over my chest for Mike. He when he did that. And yeah. I'm like, oh my, they're gonna beat him up, <laughs> and not even Kenny is gonna be able to stop him. No. They're gonna beat up Mike. They're Bigley. just yeah. gonna kill him. Those were guys that beat Mike Birbiglia is up. Sure. The phones are lit. Let's say hi to Spiro or Spiro. Spiro, Long Island. What's up? Good morning, gentlemen. Uh, I had a. Excellent time. Patrice, I never saw you before, but that was uh, fantastic, sir. It was fantastic. Thank you. But uh, but um, I think you take that same crowd and put them inside of a comedy club. They're just going to sit there with a the little mouth shut, dipping their drinks because they're scared the bouncer's going to beat their ass. How about a that big you're wrong? What's that? How about a big <laughs> you're wrong? Well, yeah, dude, it, it's it, you put them in there. They're not. But one thing they're not is like it's not a lot of phonies. Like it, it, and and here's the thing, they're split up into who likes who when in all in the in the comedy club. So out of all the comics that come on the show, j mostly just your fans will show up, not the ones that's gonna boo you. But th those dudes, it, they will do it if they if they decide to. They're not gonna sit there and just be quiet. I've I've seen it. I just. Uh, I, I just, uh, I think we deserve not to have another virus show. <laughs> Look at him. We deserve it. No, we honestly, I'm not kidding. We can't have another one because it's gotten to the point. We had a really tough time getting this lineup together. That's why it was a lot of guys, and, and we wanted all these guys that you saw, but we were also trying to spice it up with some uh, some big names and some yeah. other people that are well-known in the, the comedy world, and they all said no to us. Not because not because they don't like us. They, all these guys do the show from time to time, but they're just they they, they they've heard all the stories and 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 the chattering that's going on. I don't blame them. And even these guys that have done the radio show for so long, I mean, backstage they were all they had that look on mm -hmm. their faces, like Ant was saying, that they were pretty much going to battle. Yep. And hoping to get through it, <laughs> hoping to get through it, so they could. So they could go home for the holidays and see their family again. That's all they were thinking. It's kind of exhilarating, though, because you do get complacent. That oh, that ten ten thousand uh, maniacs 
the 10,000 fathers of Freddy Krueger out there. Right. <laughs> when they, when they, they do, it is, it is exhilarating, man. It is, it's just when they love you, you it is something to behold. It's just, it Look, really is a great thing, but it's just that nerve wracking. In, in the end, the fans are going to do what they're going to do. I understand that, but they, they sometimes, sometimes, this is all I've ever asked. You got to, you got to look at the bigger picture and realize what this ends up doing. In yeah. the end, it winds up uh, we don't do another show <laughs> because we we can't get the right guys anymore. We no, just, we just can't get the right guys. They don't want to go into. It. These are comics that have gotten on airplanes. And flown to Iraq. Right. They have done. They have done shows under mortar fire. They have flown into Baghdad Airport in military maneuvers in C 130s that are uh, the scariest landings you'll ever have. Yeah. Yet they don't want to get in front of our crowd. Yeah. And uh, comics who do an hour and ten, hour fifteen. Right. Hour twenty on stage, regular basis, five shows in a row. The fit, the ten to fifteen minutes you had to do as there's a big clock in front of you. You you're counting down and you're praying as each joke does well. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and some of the you know I could say this. Some of the names that said no that shouldn't have said no. Uh, Nick DiPaolo, uh, David Tell, mm -hmm. uh, Bob Saget. Okay. Uh, Jimmy Fallon was going to be our special guest, by the way. Yeah. And I think he heard the chatter. He did, right? He heard the chatter yep. and all of a sudden he's like, uh, 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 no, I got to go out to L.A. and I got to start practicing because I'm taking over for Conan O'Brien on the Internet. That was his excuse. Yeah. He was basically saying, I can't do this. I, I, I'm too freaked out by your audience. Of course. Jimmy effing Fallon. Vicious. We want to go, ladies and gentlemen, Jimmy Fallon. He really wanted to do it, but then he started asking around, and, and all of a sudden, man, the excuses came on. Oh, heavy. yeah. So yeah. what's this all about? What's this? And he must have got heard like, oh, yeah. oh you're not going to, no, you're not going to do that. And there were other guys as well that said no that uh, are right up there with the names I just mentioned. Uh, Norman, New Jersey, what's up? Hey, what's up, man? Norman? What's up, buddy? Yo, yo, I'm just trying to, I'm with Patrice, like, you got to focus. Like, this is an only crowd. You guys are a comedy show. You guys bring a lot of comedy to us, so, like, you know, we're harder to impress. And that's not our fault. That really isn't our fault. We threw, you know, like, I we threw, I ten, we threw like, ten guys at you. You couldn't sit through one sit guy, through one that guy, guy without him booing. One guy near the end of the show, you couldn't and help he, us out and just get through it. Because then we would have a great story to tell. We're like, guys, to all the comedians out there, good news. 10,000 people at the PNC. No one got booed. People are saying it's one of the best shows they've ever seen. And that would have made it easy to, to book this thing next year. Instead, now we have to officially say you saw the last one. Uh, all right, all right. But I'm saying is, I mean, like, I I met you at a Dane Cook show, and I watched you watching Dane Cook during that show, and I'm thinking, look at, oh, he's seen so much comedy that he's watching Dane Cook right now, and he ain't even laughing. I watched you that whole show, bro. You didn't laugh at all. Yeah, but did he boo, you idiot? <laughs> well, yeah, you didn't boo, but I'm saying that's the mentality. We're ten th we're dumb animals. We are. But, you know, you got to impress us. We're the only... No, we don't. We, got we set up a show. They're funny comics. And if one doesn't float your goddamn boat, you sit there, drink a beer, look at your white trash girlfriend or whatever that want you, you want to do. Uh, but booing the guys is stupid. Dude, it's it's stupid. And and Norman, hold on, because I got to defend myself. I think Dane Cook's a very funny uh, comic. I I it's see no, I see so so much comedy that I'm not sure. Exactly. Shut up! I don't know what exactly. I don't know what show. No, I'll, I'll explain something. I don't know what show uh, you saw me where I wasn't laughing at Dane Cook, but I also look at the, some of these guys in a different way, and I study what they're doing on stage. And I'm almost not paying attention to the jokes because I like to see how some of these guys, you know, work a room. Like Dane Cook was doing Madison Square Garden with just him and a stool. And I found that yeah, fascinating. That cool. And that's what I was kind of studying. Like, wow, all right. I was, I was watching his body movements and, and, his, uh, and his body language. Okay, so you're telling me... You Boo! I hate Boo! your phone call! Boo! Boo your phone call Boo! sucks! Boo! Dude, have a better phone call! Boo! <laughs> Ass. <laughs> Guy's trying to make a point why he booed the comedians because they want he expects more. Go screw yourself. It's too bad because uh, you know this virus show thing we really enjoyed doing. It's fun. It's it's over, Johnny. It's over. It's over. 
And we kind of really asked for a favor after the animation festival when they booed uh, Dan Natterman. First of all, we were throwing a few com you know comedians at you just to break up all the animations we did at the animation festival. Yeah. <clears throat> And we, we we decided, you know, this guy's a little quirky, a little strange, but he's pretty popular in the comedy world. Yeah, let's throw Dan Adamant out there. The the audience will at least give him a chance. They didn't even give him a chance. And even then, we're like, all right, please don't do that anymore. Please. Yeah. Because cause there's 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 a bigger a bigger picture here. We're trying to like uh, we're trying to protect. Mm -hmm. and, and quite frankly, from a comic standpoint, Dan Natterman's situation he it may have been the funniest <laughs> dealing with a booing i've ever he started doing shakespeare yeah, which yeah. was almost genius it made me laugh so hard that he would do what he did man but <laughs> that that one at the pnc you you almost want to go out and and give a speech one of those hey yeah hey now hey what are you doing what are you doing because it was just like, what the hell? All right, really fast, because we got to take a break. Glad I saw the virus show in Vegas before you canceled the tour. Fans were like two-year-olds. They just wanted to do Bill Burr moment, uh, the Bill Burr moment over and over. We talked about that. Uh, Burbiglia was overwhelmed by the crowd size. I was there. Y'all, white boys party different. Uh, Burbiglia didn't fit in. Uh, Burbiglia get booed was awful. Fans should give him a chance. Uh, don't take virus tour away just because of this. But we had a tough time booking this one, and and the reason was because the co the comedians know what what happens to some of them, and and I, I'm I'm sad to say it's over. It's over, Johnny. It's over, Johnny. Let's say hi to Garrett. Uh, Garrett on Long Island. It's over, Johnny. Hello. It's hello. over. <laughs> Garrett. Hello. Yeah. What's up? Hi. Uh, how are you guys? Good. Um, I saw the show Saturday. It was bloody brilliant. I loved it. My friend and I saw it. But we were so bloody... It was so bloody awful about Mike Birbiglia. And I was just... I'm somewhat ashamed to say uh, I was a part of that crowd, even though it was a great show. I was so sad because he was on the show a week or two ago and he was saying how afraid he was that this was going to happen to him. <laughs> oh, God. Well, we really needed a perfect show. We, and we were backstage kind of like high-fiving and everyone's kind of nodding like look look see this is good and that would have that would have that would have ended the 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 feeling some of these comedians get you know what the, that would have ended it and we would have been able to mm -hmm. book whoever the f we wanted next year you know what the problem was um also he was backstage and he was going up to people going hey did you see a picture of my best gal i'm gonna see her when i get back home <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna marry marry sue when i get home Here's a picture of her. Oh, never do that. Take a good look at this lump of <laughs> Yeah. Bag him and tag him. <laughs> Let's go to Adam in Jersey. Adam. <laughs> you wear a hoodie out on stage, and I'll get you a one-way trip out of the bush. But he was sleeping. I guarantee. <laughs> Adam. Hey, I think you. Wrigley was just a bad choice. Uh, I see Mike Wrigley before. He's a funny guy. I just think it was a bad choice to have on that show. His comedy just doesn't do well. Well, Adam, after 20 comedians said no because of what they've been hearing, the rumors they've been hearing, you know, I thought it was a great choice. <laughs> <laughs> I knew beforehand for Wrigley was going to get food. I mean, a lot of people did. It, it just, it, it's just comedy. They just that crowd. Well, you know, like some, I don't think, I, we tried, I don't think it's ever going <laughs> to, I, people got to understand the big picture and they don't understand the big picture and now, now we uh, have to say goodbye to the virus show. You think you know about bombing? Well, come on, pothead, tell me about bombing. <laughs> Let's take our first break, we got lots to do today. Yep. Uh, we got Larry King drunk tapes, remember that beheading story? We got police tapes of the beheading. No. Oh. oh, we'll explain. Yeah, it it, it, insane, it took a fun funnier turn than just cutting the guy's head off. <laughs> did we do a whole black white thing on this show? And we got Patricia O'Neill sitting in for Jimmy, who's out doing the Bob Saget roast, flying back today. I believe he'll be in tomorrow. But man, it's always crazy white dude. This, no, this is crazy. it wasn't. This is. What was he? No, oh no, was he? Uh, it was a big giant Asian or some Eskimo or something? Canadian. It, no, he was a he was. Was he one of the uh the, he was, he the was, natives? He was something Canadian uh, native um, Canadian Canadian Native, native American. American. Is that what you were gonna <laughs> say? <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't a white boy. Yeah, was he a Canadian uh, Native American? 
Yeah. Oh, is it a big oh, Asian big Asian guy? Asian, man. Oh. Wow. Oh. Wow, really? That doesn't fit the uh, profile. Nope. I would have bet ten ten thousand dollars it was a white boy. Just crazy what? white guy, yeah. Nope. Mm. People are saying that they might have just uh, got a little uh, uncomfortable after our dumb car giveaway, where Pete's like, "No, no, this is great. No, it'll be great in the in the back parking lot." Oh, we'll get into that after the break. Without the camera going out, the car giveaway thing wasn't all that bad. Well, I mean, how about you make sure the camera thing. doesn't go the, out? I know. This is a professional chicks. effing show. We were making some funny jokes about the people and stuff, but yeah. We'll explain that after that the break. Was, yeah. We'll explain that after the break, too. Patrice O'Neill sitting in today. It's Opie and Anthony. Stay there. Hey, Patrice O'Neill. It's the Opie and Anthony Show. 877-212-ONA. I want to say hi to all the... Uh, Fans, I ended up meeting on Saturday. Yeah, we just we just killed a lot of people, but the fact remains that uh, met a lot of cool people, a lot of appreciative people, a lot of a uh, lot of huh? Yeah, K Rock girls were uh, quite. They were rocking. Delicious. They were partying out in the lot again, which was really cool. Hanging out. This year, strippers. Yeah, <laughs> a lot, a lot of, a lot of ones that look like uh, Peg Bundy, <laughs> <laughs> Peg Bundy, and, and stripper clothes. <laughs> oh God, there was one that was just a mess. Not to be unappreciative, <laughs> but there was a couple of aunties. Yeah. Auntie, hi. Hi, Auntie Butt Cheeks. <laughs> boy, oh boy, it was some a couple of cruddy ones. It was some delicious ones. Yeah. But the K-Rock girls, for the most part, oh, yeah. I would say was batting Hall of Fame numbers, even mm -hmm. among baseball, probably 80%. Yeah, very Young, good. Delicious, brand new girls. There was a couple of uh, cheese balls that was floating I think, around. Mm -hmm. I think the K-Rock girls are going to be coming in here in this week, next week. Uh, uh, in, a, in a few weeks, and we're going to like help uh, pick uh, the K-Rock team. All right, yeah. So we're going to have fun around? with that. Yeah, of course. And we'll get back to the uh, the discussion on the virus uh, show that happened Saturday at the PNC Bank Arts Center. People are just waking up. The headline, uh, if you were there, you just saw the last one. Simple as that. Sim we can't go on. No. We just can't. We can't go on. We can't. And you know what? Uh, we did good. We did 14 or 15, I believe, of those things. And uh, we did good. Unless you hold a comedy draft. Well, <laughs> and maybe we come up with some new idea. Maybe we all just go camping. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just do a camp trip. Uh, so uh, I, we found out late last week that uh, good old Fareed, Ugh. he sort of was a friend of ours, sort of. I, I don't consider him a friend of mine whatsoever. <clears throat> the only time the guy called me in the last two years, by the way, was for my birthday. Now, uh, just say happy birthday, and I said I even said to him at the at the time I go, Free, where the f have you been? All hell is breaking loose with your company. All hell is breaking loose with the people you left in charge to decide what markets uh, Anthony and I should be in, mm -hmm. and uh, and they're taking us out of all your markets. Where yeah. the f have you been? I've been in hiding. <laughs> uh, yeah, he says. I don't. Uh, I, I I'm not I'm not friendly with uh, people like this. It's it's strictly business. I yeah. understand that, but this. This is no way to do business. I have not heard hide nor hair from this guy in I don't know how long. And all uh, he's doing has been yanking us off of all of his stations for some reason. What, is it us goofing on the, the crap stock that we bought in at $19 a share and it's it's down into pennies now? Is that it? Was it a take the money and run friggin' pump and dump? That uh, uh, you got us into, they're Fareed, because for some reason, um, even business-wise, not even talking who's, friendly. Who's Fareed Fareed's the uh, head of uh, Citadel Broadcasting, which I call something else that sounds like Citadel. Okay. What, yes. When we got in, uh, the shares were nineteen dollars a share. That was the IPO, and I believe it went up to twenty-one, twenty-two. I think was as high. Should have bailed. Look that up. Should have bailed right there. Now it's around a dollar a share. A dollar share. So that shows you what's going on with this company. Go ahead, Anthony. Anthony was it's, in a good It's there. awful. And, uh, you know, business is one thing, but there is also some kind of professional courtesy. I'm not even calling it a friendship. It's professional courtesy that you should get a call from the uh, CEO or even somebody else. Judy in Ellis. Charge. Right, Judy Ellis, uh, his crony there. Uh, Actually, and, and I, I'll throw another name at you. Kevin Legret. I sort of go... 
back with him, but I always <clears> thought he was kind of a phony. He's like good friends with Brother Weeze, and he runs like the Syracuse station, the Buffalo station. Mm -hmm. So when all that was going down, I got his email. I go, Kevin, you got to be kidding me. What the F is going on? Why don't you give me a call or at least write me back and explain yeah. what the F is going on? Professional courtesy. Professional courtesy like Ant saying? Never got an email back. The guy hid. Haven't heard anything except from Google News Alerts that tell me that... Uh, Oh, and the show is off in this Citadel market or this Citadel market. And a lot of people are like, what's with O and A? They're getting like booted from all their markets. It's like, no, we're getting booted from the Citadel markets. That's the company that has decided they are taking us off the air and putting uh, these slappy and wappy shows on. Well, d that are going to tank. Mark my words, they're going to tank. Well, in Syracuse, they put a, a show on called Shut Up and Rock. Shut Up and Rock, where they have such faith in the jocks so, uh, that they just want them to shut up and play music. So if this doesn't show you what uh, what the, how dumb this company is, they decided that they're going to compete with iPods. That's brilliant. Yeah. And then in Buffalo, uh, the PD, who I'm, I'm relatively friendly with, he wrote me a, a couple times when all that was going down. He goes, dude, they're making me do mornings. I haven't done I haven't done a radio air shift since college. Since college. Oh. So then it leads to this uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan situation. Yeah. Uh, we got a Google alert that we're being replaced in Grand Rapids, Michigan by a show called Gray and Cluck. And Gray and Cluck are claiming to be the edgiest show on radio. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I got to hear some of this edginess. And it's another Fareed slash Citadel move. So we figure, all right, what the hell? Let's listen to Gray and Cluck. They must be the brand new uh, the Howard Stern. They have to be if they're the edgiest show on radio. Edgiest right? show on radio. And and I like what they said about, uh, you know, because all these guys bring up the local angle. And right, that's right. what it is. Like they get rid of us and go, yeah, we're going local. And it's like, because people have wanted local radio for Western Michigan. Yeah. I sit there and go, for Western Michigan? Ready? They want local. Here's Gray and Cluck. All right, let's and let's sample is, some Greg and Cluck. This is what replaced us. You know, when you get replaced by maybe uh, Sean Hannity mm -hmm. or Rush Limbaugh, which has happened in the past, you're like, okay, well established show, and they're obviously uh, taking a whole uh, different direction with this radio station. They they decide to go into you know politics, right, and all that. Yeah, but to replace us with Gray and Cluck, it just shows you that your 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 company is doomed, and you have no effing clue what you're doing. And one of the guys is the friggin' program director, which makes a disastrous show. Well, because they're trying to save some bucks, of course. So they get the program director and the, to also host the morning show. And the sad part is, they weren't paying us much money. No, not that we're, not that we're crying poverty. Trust me. But when you when you know what you're making, and then they boot you to put the program director on the air and pay him just a little less than they were paying Opie and Anthony, now what is wrong with your company? We were doing that douchebag Fareed a favor. And let me be honest with you. Oh, 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 wait a minute. I used the DB word, so oh, I'll do it again. Hold on, hold on. We were doing that douche Fareed a favor. Believe me, it was nickels and dimes just to go on his stations to do him. A he friggin' contacted us that he wanted us on his stations. And we were doing well. And then he figures, you know, instead of nickels and dimes, he'll get these guys and pay him pennies and bring them on and try to save uh, his company because his stock went from $19 down to uh, 85 cents. Mm -hmm. And that means we got to go and they got to drag in program directors and janitors <laughs> uh, to do morning shows. <laughs> save money. And that's the cost. bottom line. They're saving. They're doing this to save money. And, uh, you know, I hope it works for you because... Uh, well, let's see. Let's see if it's working for him. This is uh, some audio of Gray and Cluck. These guys replaced us in Grand Rapids. Gray and <laughs> Cluck. <laughs> Ugh. Hey, I know I have a dopey radio name, but it's a dumb nickname I got when I was 12. These guys actually... Cluck. Come, these guys actually come up with names like this thinking it's going to be the next great thing in radio. Gray and Cluck, everyone. Top of the morning. What's that? 602 Monday. I believe that I had the world's worst night of sleep ever. Yeah? Yeah. I don't think I shut my eyes for more than about 11 and a half minutes at any point during the night. It's one of those where you look at the clock like, hmm, seven minutes since the last time I looked at the clock. <laughs> yeah, that hey, sucks. Look, six more minutes of my life has gone by. Yeah. Well, that'll be fun to deal with today. Yeah. You just heard the edgiest show on radio, That's... Gray and Cluck. Pew, 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 Gray and Cluck in the mornings.
They actually said the edgiest show on radio. We're going to be abrasive, they said. Yeah. They're going to take it to the edge, man. And, and the guy, I, I didn't sleep for more than 11 minutes. At a time. Anthony hasn't slept since February. Right. Shut it. Tired I of it. I tell you. My God. Gray and Clark. Pew, pew. <laughs> Bet you they use a lot of lasers in their station promos. Pew, pew, pew. Or the deep voice. Gray and Clark. You're not going to believe what you hear. Clark. Mornings. Want to hear more Gray and Clark? Who, who doesn't? Patrice? Gray and Clark? Thumbs up, right? That's what I'm quiet for. I want to. All right. And that's after a weekend in which I, uh, I had to go see uh, my brother in law's new house. That was my uh, crowning achievement. The edgiest show on radio. He's seeing his brother's house. He's seeing his brother's house. Pew, pew, pew. Holy Jesus. That was my uh, crowning achievement. <laughs> was spending uh, four hours on the road for an hour and a half worth of barbecuing in Howell, Michigan. Ooh, Howell. Yeah. That's the local angle. Okay, I'll give him that. I didn't know where Howell, Michigan is. I don't want to know where I Howell, never. St- we, I, at least we admit we don't want to know where Howell, Michigan is. Not one time did we talk about Howell, Michigan, Opie. Therein lies our mistake. Right. Gray and Clark, they barbecue on weekends. <laughs> they sit in traffic. Yeah. Yeah, former home to the KKK. <laughs> thing Howell's known for. Yeah. And this station actually broadcasts all the way to Howell, which I was surprised at. Really? Yeah, because it's over, Not it's, I mean, just the other side of Ann Arbor. Uh-uh. Way, that always, that always blow my, blows my mind how far you can get with 50,000 watts. Like, you can cover, you know, a third of the state. Mostly what blew my <laughs> mind was the fact that every time I've talked smack about my brother-in-law, that he might actually be sitting in his driveway going, <laughs> <laughs> No, he's probably not. The edgiest show on radio, gay and suck. Pew, pew, morning. He, sh- he shut the radio off and went in the house. He's not waiting in the driveway for this. No. No. <laughs> I take pride in the fact when we meet some of our fans and they're like, dude, Friday when you were doing that thing, I had to sit in my driveway for an hour. Yeah, it doesn't happen all the time, but it's one of those nice right. moments. They're not sitting in their driveway over this. Great clock. After two hours, 15 minutes of waiting alongside the road to get onto the lake, I finally make it up to the, the entrance gate of the launch. I'm thinking, okay, well, it's only 10 cars now. I'll be, I'll be money in like three hours. And that's what I remembered that I may have very well moved the keys to my boat up to Grand Rapids with me. So we stop, we get out, go back to the boat, uncover it, flip it inside out. Sure enough, I did move the keys to Grand Rapids. I know no, you did it. No, stop. No, you did it. This is some of the most edgy, abrasive radio. I've ever heard. I've ever heard. They're taking it to the limit. For he lose my effing number. Buddy, I heard you talking about lose my number. I don't need you, and Enough obviously you don't need us. Enough with that. You know them. what you're doing with Gray and Cluck mornings, Grand Rapids, Michigan. Not even the common decency to give a call and say what, why, how, who. I did move the keys to Grand Rapids. <laughs> I just grabbed all the crap, threw it in a box, moved it up here. I wasn't even thinking. Well, dude, your friend didn't stab you, so consider yourself lucky. No, he gave me one of those looks like, dude. <laughs> Exactly, Patrice. Just eat. <laughs> Just eat. Well, in this next track, we got two left, guys, and then we're going to move on to other things. Uh, Cluck gets edgy and talks about what he did instead of getting on his boat. Because, see, he left his keys in. I know he did. <laughs> wow. He left them in uh, Grand Rapids. And he wasn't anywhere near Grand no. Rapids. No. <laughs> wow. Let's find out what he ended up doing. Yeah, dude, I'll take a barbecue with my brother-in-law and Howell over that any day. It was the worst. <laughs> so I did what any self-respecting piece of white trash would do. We went to Dollar General, bought a bunch of kiddie pools, and set them up in the yard. And then, uh, <laughs> of your new place or down in Kalamazoo? Uh, my buddy's house uh, down in Kalamazoo. So we got like a couple. Boy, they are keeping it local, let me tell you. Oh, yeah. I've heard more Michigan cities <laughs> than I've ever heard in in what amounts to probably a minute and a half. How are they keeping up? They probably was like, look, our our first day, we are going to get out there, and we are going to just mention every goddamn city in Michigan. Right. And they're doing it. Program director as morning show host equals suck 
Always. And how about this? Uh, there's a bunch of guys that write for radio because we saw it on the Google Alert. If 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 a radio show goes, we are the edgiest show on radio, why don't you ask them why they think they're the edgiest show on radio? Yeah, what because, are you doing? Because talking about lost keys and maybe not sleeping at night and barbecues, I don't know, but I don't find that too edgy. That's filler. <laughs> <laughs> right. They're doing a whole show of filler. <laughs> Uh, my buddy's house uh, down in Kalamazoo. So we got like a couple 30 packs of Natty Light and sat out in the front lawn and kiddie pools, and then we had to slip and slide. <laughs> nice. Yep. By the way, that didn't happen. No, of course it didn't. The guy had no confidence in his lie that he was about to tell because <laughs> he had a boring weekend, but he knew he had to come up with something. Got to say something. Uh, it's Monday. Uh, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I did nothing. Uh, and this is typical. So then you as a jock, you uh, you, you talk about your boring weekend, and then, of course, it, it leads to the bit of the morning, and here it is. Uh, it's not very often you can actually disappoint more than 10 of your friends all at once. So that was fun. Well played. Yeah. If you've got a story that can beat that, um, let me apologize in advance, and uh, you can call us anytime you want. 800-785-1073 is the number uh, locally here in town. Four five nine eleven eighty. Call be like, yeah, I was going to go out this boat this weekend, <laughs> and then some jackass forgot his keys. You know, how dumb you feel for getting your keys. Boo! How dumb do you feel? <laughs> no, I thought that was going to be the next line. Well, there you go. Enjoy Gray and Cluck. There you go, Michigan. They're, they're setting the radio world on fire. Way to go, Fareed. Way to go. That should get the stock up to a dollar two. Yeah. Pay me, you dumb son of a bitch. You swindled me. You swindled me. Right. You hire us. You put us on stations. You, you dangle an IPO in front of us. We buy, buy, buy. The stock plummets, and then you kick us off all your stations. Bravo. For a shyster, you're doing perfect. For a gentleman and a CEO of a radio company, you suck! You suck! <laughs> God, I hate you! Well, give him a call. 1-800-785-1073. For KLQ, 1-800-785-1073. Gray and Cluck. And that's why, you know, we play the audio of these shows that replace us, to show you how ridiculous uh, the radio world is getting. You know, we're not we're not afraid of what we do with our show. And 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 we're like, all right, here, we'll throw the audio out there to to prove to everyone how ridiculous this whole business yeah. is getting. And they're actually sitting there and their their stupid offices are, are literally two or three buildings away. They're yep. sitting there way up at the top of one of these buildings thinking, "Ooh, Gray and Clark are going to get the job done." No, they're not. No, they're not. How about you friggin' uh rent somewhere cheaper to to save some money? You have to be on the Friggin' 50th floor with a view and everything. In Midtown. All these goddamn radio executives. That's how you save money. Get your friggin' executives and put them on a ground floor. In cubicles. They all need these spectacular views of the river. Right. Oh, well, we gotta cut some corners. Get me Gray and Clock. <laughs> Get me the program director and, uh, I don't know, an intern. How about you cut some cor corners by resigning? Fareed, you resign. Yeah. I know you make a, a bloody fortune from of the staffing company. Judy Ellis, why don't you resign? How about that? That would save some money. Put Gray and Cluck in there. Right. Gray could be the, uh, the, you <laughs> the, know, CEO. the CEO. And Cluck could be the, uh, VI, the VP of programming. There you go. That's saving money. A lot of money, you dopes. Dopes. But, but they want to save money, so they, they, they throw us off under the guise that they want to go local. Local means crap in 2008. I cannot tell you enough how go how that doesn't make sense. It's 2008. There's no such thing as local anymore. Where you go to a mom and pop store to rent uh, videotapes. This is not, uh, you know, you go to the general store. Do you know everybody in the places you go? It's not local anymore. You get on the internet. You watch TV. It comes from other lands. Right. And not a phone call, not an email. Kevin Legrette, you're a joke in this business. You're an effing joke. That not even the courtesy of an email back saying, look, the, it's out of my hands. This is what we have to do. <laughs> Hiding behind your desk, uh, beneath your desk. You didn't learn too well from Eric Logan or, or uh, uh, Mr. Carmazan, because I know you, you, you work for Mel as well. 
You're, you didn't learn from these guys, obviously. no? Because when the, 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 the you know when when some tough decisions have to be made, guess what? Mel Karmas and freaking would 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 go face to face with us and tell us what was going on. Eric Logan would do the same thing. What did you do? You made believe I didn't send you an email. Nothing. Effing we didn't loser. exist. Just just uh, brush it under the carpet. You bunch of friggin' uh, Citadel executives can suck a fat one. I friggin' can't, I, I just. I'm uh, appalled. I'm appalled by them. I've never seen a collection of more unprofessional douches than I have that are running Citadel Broadcasting. That's why your stock's at 85 cents. Because you suck as executives. No, you stink. You no, know it's funny, too. They're paying two morning shows in a lot of these markets. Because guess what? Pay me. Yeah. <laughs> pay me, mother F. Pay me. You have to pay us. For a, a while to come now. I want my twenty-five bucks. Have fun paying us as you as you have to pay another show. You dopes. believe me? Yeah, dopes. <laughs> for we lose my number, we're done. I think he did. I haven't gotten a call from him in yeah. quite a while. Hey, buddy, happy birthday! Yeah, well, I've, screw my birthday. Why don't you tell me what's going on? Yeah, how about a, a little friggin' <laughs> hey, come on over. I want to discuss something with you. Tell you what's going on with the company. Right, right. Here's what's uh, do and and I, I'm not even because I've said this in the past too. When uh, shows get blown out, it's one thing. They don't tell you because there are uh, things going on. Uh, you know, they got to get other people in in place. Um, so they don't tell you. And it's radio. It's part of the business. But this situation is different than that. Fareed absolutely could have called us over and said, hey, guys, here's some moves i got to make. And then let him explain his point. But he never did that. I punch up a Google alert and find, off, uh, find out we're off in, in a, a bum crap Michigan. Good! <laughs> Deal with your stupid friggin' goddamn, what's his name? Cluck? Gray and Cluck. Gray and Cluck. Live with Gray and Cluck. One is a program director. I can't even say enough how bad program directors are as morning show hosts. They stink. It's half their job. They're not concentrating on that. They're thinking of what friggin' record company executive they're going to give fellatio to. <laughs> they're not thinking about their show. What record company's going to send them to the Caribbean? The Caribbean for uh, to spin their records. And a nice package of, of nose candy. Of course. Like the old days. Give me some coke, I'll spin your records. Right. The keep, good old days. Keep use them all up being junkies. <laughs> keep playing Coldplay and, you, and, and we'll keep sending those little packages. Right. You want 14-year-old girls? You got them. Right. Spin my records. That's right. What is this, WKRP in Cincinnati? <laughs> Worse than that could ever be. Right. Oh, the old well, days with the PDs? Oh. I, look, I'll tell you this much. When you have a program director actually doing one of the shows on that station, you know you're never going to get anything edgy because the program directors are the ones to tell you not to do anything. You want some coke, free records, and a trip to Thailand to have sex with young boys? Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Speaking of which, I want to I congratulate uh, Gary Glitter for making it out alive. Hey, he's out. Gary Glitter is going to be out of prison. We can get into that story after the break. All right. Because we're edgy. We're gray and cluck. Gray and cluck. <laughs> When we're not doing radio, we are barbecuing. Live with it, Live with it Michigan. He <laughs> just said F Michigan. F the whole state. He's F the state for letting Green Club come in. This is your fault. Hope you enjoy it. <laughs> Hope you enjoy the lo the local angle. Right. The local angle cares. But I mean, I want to know. The guy. Hey, oh, hey, so then I went up to Kalamazoo. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> I mean, it helps. It helps you understand the local, you know. Oh, does it, Patrice? I, I, think I enjoy them, to be quite honest. I'll be honest with you. Shut Occasionally, up. in your home state, you throw out local references so your friends in high school can go, I remember him talking about that. That's the only reason we do it. <laughs> So if you bump into him and go, hey, I heard you talking about our hometown. Yeah. It's an ego thing. It's think, all it is. I think you guys should talk about the East Village more. <laughs> yes. Let's talk about uh, the East Village. Dude, when you um, see, you, you, you guys never had to do this, but I had to, you know, I had to go here and I had to go there. When you uh, start a radio show in one of these, these godforsaken places, they actually... They actually hand you a list of all the local towns. Towns. They 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 give you the roads, who the mayor is, and you just sit there. So on Saturday, I was uh, driving down. 
Lakeshore Boulevard. Um, yeah. <laughs> on my way to uh, uh, Lanchester. No, you said it wrong. It's Lancaster. <laughs> right. Oh, my God. You said it wrong. It's not local. <laughs> Uh, boys, it's pronounced Peabody, not Peabody. I remember that. Boys, I'd like you guys to drive the signal. We, when we got the job in uh, Worcester, Worcester, <laughs> in, in Wor Wor Worcester, when we got a job there at uh, AF, uh, yeah. and Brucey e. Mittman was the boss. The first day we get in for a meeting with him, he goes, uh, "Boys, I'd like you to drive the signal." I'm like, what? <laughs> he wanted us to drive the perimeter of the entire signal of the radio station to get to know the towns that it hits and everything. And I'm just sitting there in. In a car with Opie going, oh my God. And I'm thinking to myself, because I don't want to stir things up. I'm digging the job. It's my first radio job. I don't want to stir the pot. You didn't want to think that this sucks. But I wanted to turn to Opie at one point so badly and go, why are we doing this? Let's just stop and get a beer. We did. I know. Oh, all right. Finally. You scared me. No, at first I was like, you know, oh, Peepity. Uh, we started driving. Like, why are we doing this? No one's going to know if we did this or not. Yeah, let's, let's look go, at a map. Let's go get a beer. And then we go on the air and... and, and admits to Boston, he's like, yeah, I'm a Yankee fan, and, and, and Bruce is like, <laughs> no, you have to say you're a Red Sox <laughs> fan, uh, uh, Anthony. It's, no! No! I'm a Yankee fan. What is it going to do? And that's the conflict. They're not going to listen? And that's what Boston loved about us, was the dumb conflict that we brought to the area. Like, uh, someone actually admitting they're a Yankee fan on radio uh, on radio airwaves in Boston? They just never, that is insane! Never listen to these douches. They don't know anything. And Fareed, you're one of them. You don't know crap. Boy, how are you CEO? 85 cents a share! He always wanted to be Mel Carmen's, and I, I do believe at this point it's safe to say you fell a bit short there, Fareed. Yeah, you know what they called you back in the old days? Bean counter. <laughs> they said, oh, the bean counter is, wants to be CEO of a radio station. Yeah, because he was one of the accountants over at CBS, uh, Infinity Broadcasting. For a while. And then when uh, Mel left, they kind of elevated him to the level of CEO over there or whatever the hell he, he was supposed to be. And they're like, well, you know, he was a bean counter, so he's got <laughs> not too many beans left. I bought 19 beans. I have one bean left per share. Not, hey, beans. Not even enough to fart. No. I have one bean. <laughs> Out of every share, I had 19 beans. Dude, it's like. And there were a lot of beans, Norton. A lot of beans, Norton. You know what their stock is like? It's like someone gave you 19 M&Ms and said, don't eat any of these. Because if you if you don't eat them, right. it's it's going to turn into 30. You'll have 30 <laughs> yes. to 50 M&Ms. If you don't, don't touch them. Right. But you can't help yourself. But I have 22 M&Ms, and I, I, I got 19. Now I have 22. Why yeah. don't I just take No, no. No. Hold on to them because it's going to go to at least 30, probably 50 M&Ms. Next thing you know, you can't help yourself and you eat 18 of them. And then I looked and I had a piece of one M&M left. <laughs> I had an M. Don't you just appreciate your M&M? &M? <laughs> no. That stock certificate, Yeah. I swear to you. I don't even know where it is. I'm, I, I know where mine is. In the garbage. I'm coming in here. I'm going to wipe with it. Nice. Could you what? do that tomorrow? It, it's it's worth more as toilet paper. And by the way, uh, to Fareed and Judy Ellis and Kevin LeGrad and Citadel, we don't need you. We're filthy rich. So, you know, well, enjoy paying us until at least January for doing little, nothing. A little dusty, maybe. Not quite filthy. I just put in a huge pool. It cost a lot of money. Well, this is what I have a mortgage to pay. See, this is what the show has to do after we leave. By the way, I've paid attention to every show that has replaced us. Every show, because I'm obsessive that way. I'm of course. In, I'm insane. I, there's not one success story. Not one success story of uh, a show replacing us and turning uh, turning that station around, okay? Actually, Hootie and McGillicuddy. Oh, they might have done a little. Yeah. Uh, this is what Gray and Cluck are saying about us uh, this morning. Uh -oh. We're gonna, if nothing else, if if we can't do anything else with this show, uh, we will shoot you straight and be honest with you. And if you're an O and A fan, um, apparently, no one from the ratings ever found you because uh, if you want to mention to any of the other morning shows in town, you you ever want to crack them up, you don't have to try to tell them a joke or a witty story. Just go Opie and Anthony, and they'll laugh themselves off their bar stool. Really, Gray and Cluck? Off their bar stool. Get Gray and Cluck on the phone. Let's see if they want to discuss this. See how honest, stupid Gray and Cluck want to be. Let's let's discuss uh, the Opie and Anthony uh, radio career. 
with the Gray and Cluck radio cl- uh-huh. career. Uh, we're a joke now in this business? Really? Gray that and happened? Cluck. Hmm. How about we give it about, uh, you know what? We'll give it six months, and then we'll we'll go back we'll and we'll, see how you're we'll doing. revisit the Gray and Cluck Gray show. Gray and Cluck. We'll and see I how you're tearing it up. Guarantee there's going to be no ratings for Gray and Cluck. We'll see how you're tearing up the ratings. Ugh. We keep it local. Kalamazoo. <laughs> We're fired up this morning. Opie and Anthony, we don't use lasers to promote our radio show. <laughs> lasers. 877-212-ONA. So, uh, we were taking off uh, just about every Citadel station, and I'm sure the last two or three will be taken off now that we're <clears> bitching <throat> more. Yeah. Because that's what's weird about radio. These guys can't take it when you... When you complain and bitch. <laughs> eh. Sometimes you just got to get it out of your system, so go f- go after yourself. And we've been told That's it's close. like a, it's a cost-cutting uh, move because the company's in uh, serious, uh, serious trouble. trouble, right? So um, I was aware of this, actually, but it was just handed to me. On June 4th, uh, 2008, this is public record, so I could, uh-huh. I could read this. Fareed, who's the CEO of Citadel Broadcasting decided to take advantage of the fact that his own stock is really low and he decided to uh to buy four million shares <laughs> oh at what a dollar 72 ouch four million shares at a dollar 72 a share yeah and uh what are we what are we looking at um from friday what was the uh 84 cents so here's um <laughs> oh for he lost a couple of bucks <laughs> So he, he buys 4 million shares at $1.72. Get rid of Opie and Anthony. He decides to take advantage of the fact that his company sucks and goes, you know what, I, I can make a quick buck. Yeah. First first of all, if you can buy 4 million shares of a stock, then yeah. you shouldn't be getting rid of us because it's a cost-cutting move. You're doing just fine. He uh, thought uh, it might instill some confidence. Well, according to some quick math, uh, Fareed on that acquisition lost uh, 3.5. Five million dollars. <laughs> Oops, <laughs> that has to suck. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Yeah. See, that's see that's what brave radio guys do. That was Gray and Cluck. As soon as they realized it was us, of course they're gonna hang up. Yeah. Yeah. Make all your jokes when we're not on the uh, on the phone with you. More effing phonies in this business. We take it right to you. There you go. There's the brave gray and cluck. <clears throat> there you go. There you go. All right. Want to move on to the uh, the bus decapitation story? There. <laughs> yeah. Let's get get to get the funny back on the show. Yeah. Let's get the funny back on. <laughs> this story uh, hit last week. We had a lot of fun with it. You heard right, Patrice? Oh, it's crazy. A uh, passenger uh, decapitates man on a Greyhound bus, and they really don't know why he did this. Like uh, crazy, yeah. It just it has to be just crazy at this point, right? Canadian. And the uh, the description of the be- the beheading was unbelievable. You want to revisit the audio before we play the new audio, please? In case people didn't hear it last week, it's worth it hearing again the description of what was going on on this. Uh, this that is amazing. Man. This horror ride. I don't understand how it's not the biggest story on Ugh. on, on the planet. Right it now. is to the people on that bus. That's something they will never forget, Look, ever. Man, there's a there's a clip. I don't know if you you got it or there's a clip of the one of the people explaining. <laughs> yeah, that is the best clip. But there's one guy who is just so small you can miss it. He goes, "Yeah, uh, you know, I was just sitting there going, God, man, I'm watching him hold a head against the wall. And I just had a cigarette with this guy, and he goes, uh, you know, the head." Uh-huh. You know, I just had a cigarette with this guy. You know, the head. You, you know, because he didn't want to people confused. He had a cigarette, had a cigarette with, with, the, the killer. With, the, with the killer. You know, the head. I'm like, what? Wow. He had a smoke with the head. <laughs> wow. Just to reiterate. Ooh. Because he's standing there like a monster. Sure. 
Here's the story. Witnesses say a man traveling aboard this Greyhound bus repeatedly stabbed and then decapitated his seatmate, then paused to display the head to passengers who had rushed from the bus in horror. Just took a knife out and stabbed him. Started stabbing like crazy. Neither the victim nor the attacker have been identified, and the motive is unclear, but authorities have taken the 40-year-old suspect into custody. They say they arrested him after he tried to break a window on the bus and escape. It was a blood-curling scream. Like, is that, I was just reading my book, and all of a sudden I heard it. He also said passengers who fled the bus secured the door, and the driver disabled the vehicle, preventing the attacker from getting away. They were very brave. They acted swiftly, calmly in exiting the bus, and, uh, and as a result, nobody else was injured. The witness says as soon as the passengers were outside the bus, that's when the attacker showed off the victim's head and also began methodically carving up the body. A spokeswoman for Greyhound says there were 37 people aboard the bus and one driver. Probably didn't have to replay that clip, but uh, that's a good setup for the people that didn't hear. Uh, it's the eyewitness stuff that's amazing. Yeah. Um, he got on the bus. He looked uh, total, totally calm, totally normal. We stopped for a cigarette break. He, he got off the bus. When he got back on the bus, he... Uh, he got his stuff and he came to the back, right to the back of the bus and uh, sat right behind me uh, next to the victim. Uh, the, the bus continued on, I'd say, for, I don't know, another 20 minutes and all of a sudden we all heard this scream, like a blood curdling scream. Uh, I turned around and I, I saw the guy, He was the attacker was standing up right over top of the guy with a, a large hunting knife, like a survival Rambo knife. Uh, holding the guy and con continually stabbing him, stabbing him, stabbing him in the chest area. He, he must have stabbed him 50 times or 60 times or something like that. Oh, my God. <laughs> With a big Rambo knife. Yeah. I ran to the front of the bus and uh, told the bus driver to stop. Someone's getting stabbed. and screamed, everybody get off the bus, off the bus. Uh, we all eventually got out. The whole time, the, the attacker was, was just calmly uh, over top of the victim. Uh, he's continually uh, cutting him. Uh, I think the victim was, was gone at that point. Uh, went back into the bus to see if maybe the guy was still alive or what. Uh, when we we, went, we came back on the bus, he it was visible at the, at the end of the bus. He was cutting the guy's head off and uh, pretty much gutting him up. Wow. My girl goes, why didn't anybody try to help? Really, sweetie? Yeah, you're going to jump in there with the guy with the Rambo knife? and no, just stabbing him like Jason? To get a hold of us. Hey, hey Gray. Yo. Why are you guys trashing us on your first day? You think that's, like, uh, going to get the job done or what? It's our third week. Is it really? No one's paying attention. This is, a, this is the start of our third week. And you're talking about barbecuing and losing your keys, and that's supposed to be the edgiest show on radio? Oh, man, I'll be completely honest. I was the, uh, I was the PD when we signed you guys on. Yeah, I understand that. And that's why you're doing the morning show now, because they're looking for something cheap. You know that, so why don't you tell your audience? Hopey. They flew me to Buffalo to find ways to promote the show. We didn't do anything with ONA on the cheap. In fact, it killed the radio station. No, no, no. The listeners have said that they didn't see any promotion in Grand Rapids, Michigan, whatsoever. And don't bring up Buffalo. We were doing very well in Buffalo. I know. That's why they, I'm friends with those guys. I was out there with Evil Jim for two days trying to pick up anything and everything that I could to help promote that show. Well, bro, stop being phony and, and making O&A jokes because you believed in the show, so just stop. Dude, I would, the only thing that we ever said on this show was that the ratings... Made we just, hold on, we just played a clip. We had to make a change because of the ratings, and that's the truth. You know how the game works, man. You're not new to this. So, uh, so you guys think you're going to get the ratings up now? Dude, just the fact that we're local to Grand Rapids will mm. result in more ratings. Local. I, and, and, and so we're, we're off in Buffalo also because of the ratings? We were doing very well there. Yeah. We're off in every Citadel station because of the ratings. I had no idea that you guys were off in Buffalo. Yeah, because, yeah. For, because Fareed, in his uh, uh, wisdom, Who's gonna end up uh, with his 85-cent stock that we got in at, at $19 a share, is uh, cutting corners by getting rid of expensive uh, programming, what he deems expensive, and putting in uh, cheap programming. Look, he's got you doing two, double duty. Well, dude, no, there's a, there's a couple of things there. One, he hired in a, a whole staff when you guys went away. We're not saving any money. We had to hire... Believe me, he's saving money. Well, and believe me, no offense to you, I, I mean, we listened to some of the stuff you're doing today. That's not going to get the job done. It's going to be a nice local show. It'll be a safe show. But you're the program director, right? Yeah. 
How is that going to work when the program director is supposed to march into radio studios and go, look, guys, you can't do that. It's too edgy. So, of course, you're not going to do anything edgy or interesting because because your job's on the line. It's stupid. And you did take a shot at us. We just played this clip a, a mere 10 minutes ago. We're going to, if nothing else, if, if we can't do anything else with this show, uh, we will shoot you straight and be honest with you. And if you're an ONA fan, um, apparently... No one from the ratings ever found you because uh, if you want to give the other morning shows in town, you, you ever want to crack them up, you don't have to try to tell them a joke or a witty story. Just go, Opie and Anthony, and they'll laugh themselves off their bar stool. Yeah, they're going to laugh their, themselves off their bar stools, really? Here, here, do you know what we've done with our careers, oh, jackass? Yeah, I do. And I, so do your effing show. Uh, you moved on from Opie and Anthony, and, and just move on. You were a fan of the show, and now because we're not around, you're going to trash us? Not at all. Do you have any idea? When, when were you on Leno? When were you on Letterman? When did you guys do a comedy show in front of 10,000 people? Why don't you answer some of those questions? Hey, are, you, are you a syndicated show across America on satellite radio? Hey, oh, when did you get your start in mornings? Four years ago? Five years ago? When did you get your start with Anthony on the radio? When was your first day on the air? What is this, ten questions? What does that have to do with anything? Just don't trash us. Uh, you guys decided to go in another direction. So do that. Dude, that's you know damn well you guys uh, were fans of the effing show. All right, so it didn't work out. Don't take your stupid shots. I told you. Dude. Our careers are what they are. We've done very well for ourselves, and you know that. And it didn't work here. Do you have any ideas, the PD? And who's the dope laughing in the background? What have you done with your stupid career, dope? Do you have any idea how annoying it is over the last two years to have this station beaten in morning drive by the free beer and hot wing show? Well, I guess they like them a little better. What least, can I tell you? At least I've heard of them. <laughs> it, it, so you're gonna you're gonna now beat free beer and hot wings? Not off the bat. We're starting. To There's no offense, but you're not Dude. because you're the PD. You can't do it. You can't do both jobs because you're supposed to be the guy who goes. No, look, guys, you can't do that on the radio. So how's that gonna work? That doesn't pertain to anything. You're a suit. <laughs> you really are a suit. Before. And then they did this because you know that this is what you do after uh, Opie and Anthony leave your town. If you're calling from New York City and you're rolling tape on this there in the ONA office. There's a reason you guys weren't on the radio anymore. This is it. Hmm. Did, can you tell me what that means? I don't even know what you did. What what kind of shot was that? I don't even get it. Waiting on hold, and we were playing a simulcast of your stock option talk. I wish to God you guys would have paid half this much attention to this market when you were actually... This market when we were blah, 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 blah. Look, it didn't work, whatever. But don't f don't take shots at us now. You know damn well we're successful in this business. You're successful in New York. Here it was... Uh, no, we're successful in a lot of uh, cities on regular radio. And as far as satellite radio goes, we're we're pretty much the biggest thing on XM. That's, That's fun that dealing with Fareed, too. Yeah, Fareed's going to screw you in the end, too. So, you know, keep doing uh, keep doing the corporate thing, bro. But go do your stupid show and, and, and leave us out of it, you pussies. Okay. All right. All right, man. No. Shut up, dude. You Bye -bye. didn't even say anything ex except do a little pot laugh. That's great. That was, that was uh, magnificent, dude. <clears throat> I must say. I really have to say that, dude. Oh, that was beautiful, man. A lot of respect for that. I if, suck. The, if this was, I'm telling you, if this was where I grew up, what Opie just did... <laughs> Was that guy has to give him his lunch money <laughs> for the rest of his life yeah. unless he changes schools? And I'm not lying to you, man. Yeah, I'm not lying. He had to pretend to get tough at the end, kind of. It just that was beautiful. That I, was I, like I have to say that was. Beautiful. You know what that was too? That wasn't talking to a uh, a morning radio guy. That was talking to a program director. That sounded like talking to a PD. Ugh. Oh. Good luck to you guys. Good luck. You're that really was... you're really gonna need it. If they play that while their show was on air, they're in deep trouble with their listeners. That just was. See that? That's, that was just sad. But that's the problem. These guys are all brave, you know, because you're not around, and then Ooh. you call them out on it. Oh, and you didn't back down. And, one, I, that was because because he was looking for an out. Yeah, he was looking for a nice fat out. Yeah. And Ope was like, "You're just a jerk, and you're <laughs> lying." And the guys just like, "But, but, but," and he, and he wouldn't even give him an out. I, I, that no. was marvelous. Program was director gangster. talk. God, God bless the optimism, but you know that what what we heard, they're they're not going to get the job done. Going local and making sure they mention three or four local things every break. Who gives a crap? And nobody in my life has yet to explain radio ratings to me. Mm. Yet, yet, it's arbitrary. It's ridiculous.
ridiculous. It just it just made up. Look, you know, if it if it didn't work in Grand Rapids, it didn't work. You know, whatever. But uh, you know, then turn around and like trash us when you were the guy that quote believed in the show and and you're definitely a fan of the show. You know, you, didn't they say in one of their breaks, we keep it honest here? Oh, yeah. Why don't you say, look, I we love these guys. It didn't work in our market. We're sorry to see them go, but we're going to try something new. But instead, it was like, well, they're the laughing stock of all morning radio of here in Michigan? Grand Rapids. People are of falling Grand off Rapids? their bar stools. All you have to do is mention their name. Oh, he was shut just... the f up. At least they know our oh, name. <laughs> that was that was painful to listen to, man. God damn, if that was a street. Ooh. Well, we got uh, the latest audio on the beheading, so we take a quick. I break. just heard a good beheading. <laughs> Fired up today. Absolutely. Opie and Anthony on your radio dial. Uh, let's say hi to Greg in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Greg, what's going on? Hey, I just heard your cut about uh, Gray and Cluck. I heard those idiots talking about you guys the first they went live. Their show's fucked, man. Well, I don't even care if they suck. I don't care if they're good. But, you know, if you're going to say that you're an edgy show and you're an honest show... Then why don't you just tell the truth, that you you liked the show, you wanted to work at Grand Rapids, it didn't work, it's unfortunate for everybody, but we're going to move in another direction. Instead of taking all sorts of shots at us uh, uh, when we're long, in, you know, we're long gone. I mean, I hope people in Michigan understand how embarrassing that was that your morning show guy. I, I mean, I, and I stay out of these radio things. I'm just a guest because I might be in Grand Rapids and need to do uh, 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 Cluck and uh, Gray. And but to watch that phoniness, because I heard the clips. The only if this was in the hood, this is what happened to that guy. He he has to give his lunch money to Opie every day now for the rest of his life, <laughs> nice. unless he's transferred from this school. He he has to pick what they say a new route. If he yeah. walked home on the main route, he has to go <laughs> ten miles out of his way to get to school now because mm -hmm. Opie just took him in the bathroom. I'm telling you. Took him in the bathroom, smacked him in his face when nobody was looking because he wasn't playing games. Gray, this is what he did. He said, almost like if a magician gave away the tricks, he goes, dude, you know it's it's radio. You know what I'm oh, doing. Really? Of course he does. Of course he knows what he's doing. See how much bravery I have now because of Gray's nonsense? I'm a bully. I was shutting my big mouth until I heard this guy let everybody out. Why shouldn't I get some lunch money now? Mm -hmm. It's no fear to this guy. If he called me and go, what's with this guy? I'll go, shh. You shush him now. He's, he should be effectively finished right now. Yeah, that should have done it. That, no credibility. Uh, He's has That has no credibility now. You know what he was talking like? Also, a program director. He wasn't talking like a morning show Why host. Would he get talking to another like morning Why show host. Why would he do that? He's talking like a program director talking to air talent. That's that's what was his take on the well, whole and thing. And they did the same thing in Buffalo. Uh, I think we've like educated a lot of people about radio in general. Program directors, we don't acknowledge. They all suck. No. Program directors are guys that failed at doing radio they shows. They wanted to be on the air. At some point every PD was on the air. They had their show. It it failed miserably and they ended up being a program director. <laughs> There's not talking to air personalities uh, and vicariously living through them. There's not one program director we listen to or acknowledge or respect in this business to the point they don't even give us a, a program director anymore. They finally no. got it. They're like, these guys don't acknowledge program directors. We loved you. We were, we were, we were. <laughs> yeah, they all suck. No, well, we went uh, to Buffalo to try to figure out, uh, did you? Did you really? Did you have a nice time? You know how many program directors we slapped about the face over the years? And they're like, I, I thought I told you not to do that, but and then you did, and then you went down the hall and you did that. Yeah, we did. What are you gonna do about it? Then he went to. I, I don't know. I'll he, I'll have to talk to the GM and see see what we're gonna do now. Because, he went to because now you're not now you're not gonna listen to me, and I I don't know what to do because when I was in when I when I was in Des Moines, <laughs> Iowa, the local uh. the local morning show, they listened to every word I said. But these Opie and Anthony characters, they don't they, they don't listen. What am I gonna do now? And in, in, in the book of yeah. arguing. Mm -hmm. That was written in the year one. <laughs> Page one was, you don't start asking me a line of cross examinations so I can lead to my own demise uh -huh. and arguments. So how long you been doing it? Uh, twenty years. Continue. Yeah. So what's your mom's name? Uh, that wasn't. You. Gonna what happen. are you stupid? 
Shut up! <laughs> You're not going to talk your way out of this beating. The guy, the guy thought I've never been in an argument or something before. Are you kidding me? We've taken on every single and effing radio guy out there. Then, every single one of then them. Then when he started seeing the emails from fans going... Dude, you're not clucking and you're not graying. Right. Dude, we're behind you. And he tried to go, well, what about the beer? It was too late. It's called a punk test, my friend. You mm -hmm. failed that. Punk test is I do two things to you that I find out that you are a punk before I actually make my move on you. Right. I bump into you, and then I knock your milk in your lap. <laughs> and then by the time I go, give me your money, and you go, I don't want to, I go, shut your face, because I already pushed you and knocked your milk in your lap. Now do you want me to punch you in your eye? Give me your money. And he said, all right, you got me. He gave up the money. Yep. Then he tried to defend himself in front of, in front of his friends. Because you knew somebody broke it up. Why would he play that beating on the air? And there's a, there's a reason, like... Why would he do that? Did they... Wait, Joe... Uh, Joe, Michigan. Joe. Yeah. Hey. Hey, fellas, they played that entire interview on the air. It was oh. fantastic. <laughs> they didn't... They were in way over oh. their heads. <laughs> Topes. Fantastic. Good luck. They, they never pushed your show. I pushed it more than they did. Look, I'm not going to... you guys for years on XM. It's been Fabulous. Look, but I'm not going to sit here and go, uh, it's their fault. It, may, it just didn't work in Grand Rapids, whatever. You know, but move on and, and do the right thing. And don't trash us after we're off the air. That's that's a pussy way out, man. Yep. And th there's a reason why these guys are stuck in one market for, for their entire careers. Because they listen to the corporate douches. <laughs> they listen to program directors. One of them is a program director. Ugh. And they all sit there and they're jealous because they see like you know shows like ours uh, getting very very successful. The the formula is really easy. You go on the air and you don't listen to any of these corporate assholes. <sighs> that was that was embarrassing. I, I I'm almost mad at him because I I just it would have been better for him to go f you Opie and then call you or email you or something that he that wait do something that you couldn't he couldn't you couldn't prove that he actually said sorry. Just something. Send a pigeon with a note. Yeah, as soon as a we... self-destructive message to say, hey, look, you know what this is, man. Nothing personal. But mm -hmm. on the air, you were supposed to go, what? Yeah. What? We're, the new, we're the new kid in town. And then, like, fake it. He couldn't even fake it. No. And none of these guys uh, are successful after we leave these markets. We were off the air for three weeks over there? I guess. How come I just saw it yesterday? Because, because you know, because Fareed left us out of the loop. We, we assumed we were still broadcasting to Grand Rapids. That this is what This is what this effing business has uh, become. That Fareed is a worm. He's a worm. He told the whole company. Have we really been off three weeks? Uh, apparently, these guys were on three weeks. And, I mean, <laughs> Anthony plays it different than me. I actually pay attention to this stuff, and I'm not I'm not taking a shot at Anthony. Mm -hmm. not. I, I thought we were still on. Yeah. And if I thought we were still on, wow, were they... Pulling the wool over our yeah, eyes. Yeah, I, th I, I read a, a news article yesterday how these guys were, you know, going to be Jeez. swooping in and being local. Right. So I'm like, oh, we're off in that market? We've been off for three weeks over there? Yeah. Joe Pesci from Goodfellas. And then pot and then Pothead Dude was oh, the no. smartest... Hothead dude was no. the smartest guy during that whole phone call, just laughing, because <laughs> he knew he was in over his head. Uh, 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 <laughs> I bet you, well, uh, Sam said as soon as we hung up, uh, then they go off on there. Well, <laughs> Oh, oh, that's the that's the brave way to do it. Too late. It's too late, man. Go screw yourselves. Oh, there's no redemption you, for that one. For Reed. No right, redemption. Let's, let's get back to the guy that uh, was decapitated on that Greyhound bus. We're setting up the new audio. So here's the final clip. Fareed? Huh? Was his name Fareed? Wow. <laughs> here's the, uh, oh, wait, what is this? Where am I? Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants 2. Oh, because Traveling Pants 1 was so good. Dude, we did the bit. It was, yeah. We killed that stupid Oh, God. <laughs> we killed that stupid bit. Would you God, ever be caught it, dead? <laughs> Would you ever be caught watching that <laughs> the first, drivel? The first Mystic one. Pizza 3. Yeah. Dude, the, the <laughs> return of what? Patrice, the first one didn't even do well. <laughs> and they decided to make a second one. Where, the Bridges of Madison County 2. <laughs> where Fat Broad is going to uh, squeeze into the same pants as Skinny Broad. <laughs> See, they're like magic pants. What? They fit all the broads. The fat ass one. The little skinny ass one. The only reason I knew that movie exists is because of that ridiculous title. They just had yeah. to yeah. do another movie so they could say it again. 
Traveling the Pants. The Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants 2? Doesn't Traveling Pants mean like a wedgie? <laughs> like, oh, they're traveling on me. <laughs> the first movie made $8.600 at the box office. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Yeah, they had to make another. I, I just watched it. I thought it was a Club Med commercial because they just show these girls jumping in the water. Of course. And it's Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants 2. 2. You Are didn't... you serious? I'm so sorry, dude. Well, I couldn't what... even... <laughs> now go with it, man. We killed this movie. <laughs> what? Oh, yeah. Didn't you see how the first one ended? It left an open end for uh, a sequel. Really did? Yeah. Did she pull out a card and say, there's an evil guy? <laughs> there's an evil woman killing everybody? No, actually, uh, she Doc... She herself Catwoman? Doc Brown came back down and said, it's your kids. It's your kids. <laughs> and then they all got in the uh, DeLorean and it took off. And, uh... <laughs> You know, where they were going, they didn't need roads. <laughs> so that's how it ended, and it said to be continued. Are you serious? Yes, Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants ended that way. So now it's Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants 2. And then Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants 3 will take place in the Old West. <laughs> uh, Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants 4 be in 3D. The 3D? <laughs> As a fat woman rolls her own burrito and moves it towards the camera and back. <laughs> I can't believe. I'm so sorry, dude. I cannot believe I just saw that. Yeah. Yeah. Horrid. I thought it was a Why? cruise ship commercial. I was just no, looking it's... at it. It's two girls jumping in the water. Yay. Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants. Too. Do you know what that awful movie is about? These. I don't know. These little broads. Go show. go on vacation and stuff, and uh, wear these pants. And then when they have adventures, and then they send the pants to another girl. And when she puts the pants on, then they show her boring ass story. And then she's is it the same, is it the same concept it, the, of the dollar bill movie that you know? What Maybe whoever has the, the dollar. And now it's, it's just with pants. Whoever's got the pants on. That's some dirty you know, ass pants too. Yeah. Filthy ass pants. They didn't have enough pants adventures in one. No. And Didn't for some they reason, editing it's in still one to go, fits. You know what? We're going to cut out one of these traveling pants adventures. No, they have you plenty. You want the synopsis of two or what? Please. What's the synopsis of one? Three years, three years after the events of the Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants, the four young women are back. Despite the distance that divides them as they depart for college, the friends from Anne Blah Blah Teen's book series still stay connected. This sequel returns Amber and Blah and Blah. Is and Ugly blah. Betty in it again? Yeah, and blah. yeah, Ugly Betty's in there. So that's the Amber Tamblin. That's why. There you go. Okay, all right. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Ugly yeah. Betty's in it. Those all traveling right. pants should just be, if they're off to college, it should be in some dorm room, laying on the floor, ready to just get full of stuff that wasn't completely cleaned up. <laughs> <laughs> Here, now you take them. What's this in here? Put them through the wash. Yeah. They should call it Sisterhood of Traveling Pants, not at Ugly Betty's Famous. We're trying it again. <laughs> and, and and they're magic. They are kind of magic pants because they fit Amber Tamlin's ass and Ugly Betty's ass, Yeah, which would never happen. That's like me fitting into Patrice's pants. It's yeah, and all of a sudden they fit. Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants started over here, Patrice. <laughs> Brotherhood of the Traveling Pants. Yeah. Hey, Oaf, let me grab your pants. All right, is it your turn to well, wear the pants? I want to have an adventure. <laughs> I cannot believe this. Oh. I can't get in a movie to save my life. You're the brother, brotherhood of Opie's smelly sweatpants. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's got to wear his gym pants. <laughs> Me and Steve. We should do a parody for YouTube. I think it would do very well. Us yeah. three just sharing pants. Sharing our pants. How about we, Patrice, could you bring in a pair of your jeans and Not we'll. Not a problem. We'll do a whole freaking thing for YouTube. Not a problem. Brotherhood of the traveling Patrice pants. Yeah. <laughs> It's gonna happen. It's gotta happen. Here's the dumb trailer. Don't you know that all the beaches in Greece are nude? Lena shy. Lena shy. Oh, you got one shy one. All right, here we go. <laughs> a shy one. Yep. A hoa. Right. Mm -hmm. One that's uh, wow, 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 wow. Very, very studious. An intellectual, sure. Yeah. And, and the one, other oh, one's kind uh, of athletic. Just a rebel. No. Oh, maybe. Oh, no, a rebel. Yeah. I'm going a rebel. rebel. A tattoo. Well, on a rebel finger. ho. Yeah, yeah. You need okay. athletic, intellectual, shy, ho. That's the formula. Okay. This is basically Sex in the City for 20 something. Hey. Lena Shy. Saturday night. Meet me. I can't. Bridget's bold. <laughs> Tibby's bored. And Carmen speaks her mind.
You think that a pair of jeans that fits all three of you is going to fit all of this? Four friends. Her big ass. One sisterhood. I'm so sorry. The Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants with a PG starts Wednesday, June 1st. Boring. <laughs> oh, that was the first one. Of course. Oh, that was the one for the first. But it yeah. could it could be for the second yeah, one. It's the same guy. Oh, the same, same story. Oh, uh, no, that's hit, that's pants too. Trip. What? what? <laughs> yeah, I was guess. It? Yeah. Because the trail for two should just be. Remember the first one. There you go. Same crap. <laughs> <laughs> Only their asses are a little bigger. <laughs> And Betty's famous. <laughs> Ugly Betty's famous now. <laughs> she was contractually obligated to do another one. Uh, they should do Young Guns 3. Oh, now you're talking. Now that Kiefer <laughs> is the dude from 24. And he's gone to jail. <laughs> and he gets Dewey's and he's insane. <laughs> and the trailer just has Lou Diamond Phillips going, thank God. Thank you. You got me off the sci-fi <laughs> channel doing these <laughs> movies with Friggin' college CGI. <laughs> oh, you see some of the science, oh, science fiction he's in? Super Croc 2. Oh. They had the best bad movies ever. <laughs> it, they stink. <laughs> those sci-fi original movies. Oh. And they all have him in it. Bumblebee Man. Yeah. Starring. <laughs> Lou Diamond Phillips must starring, save the world. Starring the good-looking guy from Star Troopers that they thought was going to be famous. <laughs> but it didn't work out. What is this? It? Casper Van Diem. Whoa. I, You're good. He's in everything. He's in movies that saved 2008. Sci-fi original. Spider-Rat 3. Starring Spider Lou Diamond Phillips from La Bamba. <laughs> <laughs> like he's got to still say, and from La Bamba, Lou Diamond Phillips. Because they couldn't get Benjamin Brack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Benjamin Bratt. Lou Diamond, Lou Diamond Phillips, Phillips, who lost his wife to lesbianism. Turned his wife gay. <laughs> right. And you now remember? he's battling giant ants in his sci-fi original. Lou Diamond Phillips has finally come out of hiding. <laughs> <laughs> After Fire Ant Boulevard. <laughs> <laughs> and now he's the sheriff. Yeah. He's always the sheriff of a Oh, town. he's always, yeah. He plays a small town sheriff. They just give him the same wardrobe every movie. Sci-fi is just like, yeah, Lou, Lou, you know where your costume is. Did you bring it? They told him to take it home and watch it. <laughs> it's either they're going to give him the guitar or the the sheriff badge to put on his pajamas from the last movie he had. It's just so, oh, poor Lou. Lou Diamond Phillips must save the world. From this onslaught of bad CGI. His first film in 10 years, he had to hide after he found out his wife turned gay. Turned lesbo on him. He figured it's, uh, it's about time he comes out of hiding to make this crap. Coincidentally enough, this movie is about killer clams. <laughs> Coincidentally <laughs> enough. That's the dude. That's the trailer. Coincidentally. Coincidentally. <laughs> Oh, my God. <laughs> All right, listen, we, uh, oh, why don't we get the decapitation stuff out of the way? Because we got Larry King drunk. If we don't do Larry King drunk today, then we're not doing our jobs. Drunk Larry King? Oh, yeah, Larry King's yeah. drunk tapes. How important is the booze? <laughs> we'll get into that. Hold on. Let's get this out of the way. Though. I like my garlic with brandy. <laughs> my garlic. Garlic. You ever mix vodka with Welch's grape juice? <laughs> Shill. Wait till you hear the tapes. They're very good. All right. Uh, okay. The eyewitness from the beheading on the Greyhound bus, and then we got finally the uh, the audio that came out this morning. The trucker that pulled up had all these, uh, you know, he had a crowbar and a hammer and all these kind of things. So the three of us were sitting there guarding the door. Uh, you know, he's, he's fidgeting with the, the buttons trying to get out, and uh, he's trying to get the, to drive the bus and stuff. So the bus driver disables the bus somehow. And while we're we're watching the door, he he calmly walks up to the front with the the head in his hand and the the knife, and and just calmly stares at us and drops the head right in front of us. Holy crap! How bloody must that guy have been, too? First he stabs him in the chest as he's hovering over him fifty, 50 times, yep. and then chops his head off, and then goes over and pushes buttons. He must have just been covered in blood. Well, <laughs> it's funny you should mention that, Ann, because that's uh, what the, uh, the the new audio is all about. Listen to this. I'm dying here, Larry. <laughs> Listen to this. This is what we're finding out. Ready? <laughs> Who is that from? Reservoir Dogs. That's right. I'm dying. He, he was bleeding real bad. I'm dying. Badger appears to be a uh, six-foot-tall Asian male, short, dark hair, black T-shirt, arm with a knife right now. 
These are the police tapes as it was going down. Hmm. Listen to this. Hey, you want us to send a Mountie or something? <laughs> Badger appears to be a uh, six-foot-tall Asian male, short, dark hair, black T-shirt, armed with a knife right now. Uh, it appears he has two knives now. Or just confirmed that westbound traffic is now detoured. Double wielding. Three alpha eight. Badger is armed with a knife and a pair of scissors, and he's defiling the body at the front of the bus as we speak. And he's still uh, inside the bus. Yeah, he's right up front, right by the uh, door. Copy that. Uh, door open or closed? Doors closed and blocked with a PC. Copy that. Oh, my God. Cigars and scotch. Sisterhood of the traveling head. <laughs> Put it please, on the bus. Please tell me why 911 calls don't go like this. There's a man with two knives stabbing someone. Everyone's on the way now. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone right now. What? You're so what? right. The first thing Mom, should be. Uh, why do you need yeah. more info? Did this guy goes, <laughs> door open the clothes. Well, you figure it out because I'm not screaming running through the desert. Telling you that this man is chasing me with his knife. It should be exactly. Where are you? Okay, all, his, everyone's coming. Ready? Here's where. I'm, if I'm the 911 guy, six foot Asian. Whoa, someone's coming right now. <laughs> <laughs> We're sending helicopters. Don't, don't you worry. Not the fact that you're calling me and saying six foot Asian, I know there's no game. They're on the way now. Now what's going on? And then the rest of my call will be me going, what? <laughs> <laughs> Where y'all at? This is, who's down there? This is squad car 183. Where y'all at? It's a giant Asian cutting on somebody's head. Is the door open? I think they do that just to, just to have a 911 take the play. So they're doing their procedure. These yeah. robots. Well, door open or closed? Door open or closed. What's what the air pressure in the tires on the bus? Can you check the air pressure? Make. Well, listen to this. You're going to be amazed at the last clip we oh got. Oh, my God. Listen to this clip. We're just uh, going around the uh, bypass now. Zulu from Alpha 8. He's at the rear of the bus. Packing up the body. Zulu, Delta 1. Delta 1, Zulu, go. Okay, uh, Badger's at the back of the bus. Um, packing off pieces and eating it. Hopefully he was eating the guy. He was cutting off pieces of the guy's meat and eating it. Wait a minute, what's this from? Hey, um, listen, there's a giant agent killing somebody. <laughs> Send everyone. Uh, everyone? Everyone! <laughs> the professional. Oh, is that great? Send everybody. Every, every Are you one? joking me? This is, what? what is, what? Why is this some kind of hidden news? This should be the news. <laughs> yes. I'm on the Greyhound bus. I don't, now the world right now, we, we was talking about America uh -huh. um, falling apart money-wise. Mm -hmm. Everyone's going to be riding the bus now. <laughs> I'm going to ride the bus. Everybody's riding the bus. Now, this man decides to get on the bus and cut off and eat somebody's face. Can I <clears throat> Can I please just know that? Can I know that? I, don't, I, I barely knew that. My girl was telling me about it. I ignored her. I had to get it the third person. When my girl tells me news, I just go, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> somebody else told me, did you hear about the beheading? I'm like, what? What? Huh, what? Islamic? What? what? Is no, no. Big Asian on a bus. A big Asian. A giant six-foot Asian who's stabbing you to death. That's something to wake you. up to on a bus. Like you wake up long enough to look at that and die. <laughs> there should be times that the criminal process... This is the criminal process is crazy. Sometimes innocent people go to jail, and then a guy like this, who did it? You know. And you're not allowed to just hit him with a cattle prod. So he's not allowed to go... Hey, listen, what, he went to court and they said nothing. He shook his head, so you're not going to say nothing? Uh-uh, no. Yeah. He, they should be able to do something to him to go, no, we need to know what, why, the why you did Yeah, why you did that. We know you did it. We saw you. A lot of people saw you. It's not the wrong guy. Why'd There's you no do it? process you get off of this one. Mm -hmm. I mean, I believe in the process because, I, you know. <laughs> yeah, but in this Please. case. Oh. Dude, That's why on. I'm like, I've always said, there are some cases that are just, it shouldn't be run through the system. This guy did it. Just, just kill him. <laughs> That's it. He's not going to be a productive member a of society. A, co a, co a, a, a jury of his peers? Yeah. Which what one? Peers? Giant <laughs> Asians who understand his plight? <laughs> uh... <laughs> All right, listen, we got to take a break. We've been playing catch-up all day.
this is a weird show today, but a, but a fun one at that. Patrice O'Neill in today. Uh, we'll continue with the, what, drunk tapes from Larry King. Please. We'll do that next. Opie and Anthony, stay there. What's up, people? It's ONA. Patrice O'Neill doing a great job with us today. So uh, you got Larry uh, King doing his radio show. And he sounds a bit drunk. It sounds like he's on something. What do we know about this stunt brain? He used to do an overnight show on the Mutual Radio Network on from like 1 till 5 a.m. Yeah. And he would take a lot of phone calls. And there were rumors that there was a tape out there of him being uh, on the air overserved. Overserved. And this one, uh, I think, is from about 80-something. Oh, this goes way back? Yeah, way back. All right. Here's Larry King uh, drunk on his radio show, or so we think. All right. I'm a student of print journalism, and I just wanted to know, uh, what advice do you have for uh, uh, young people coming up into the field? Like, I, a lot of uh, for prof- professors are telling us how hard it is to get into the field at first. They're just like, no, since you're in the field, do you have any advice on that? For instance, experience, is that important? Uh-huh. Sure. Is that, is that probably the most important uh, element? Well, it's way up there. It's way up there. Anything Anything else? Anything you can do? Pressure under fire. Mm-hmm. Done this before. I don't want it to be his first uh, surgery. Okay. Applied himself well. Mm-hmm. These are things I'd have confidence in, a young MD. Okay. I'm talking about journalism field. I'm lost. What do you mean? The journalism. Like, <laughs> oh. I'm a student of journalism at a college. I'm lost, all right. And I was just wondering the most important aspect of getting into journalism, not the medical field. I think you're exhausted. <sighs> I thought he's uh, only been lost recently. This is 20 years ago. Uh, he was already lost. Well, this sounds like he was probably a little tanked, maybe. Hmm. Sounds the same to me. As he yeah, has. he sounds exactly the same as, as he does now. All disoriented. I don't understand. <laughs> That's from 20 years ago? Yeah, it continues. I am exhausted from 30 nights. No, no person, even those of us who are superhuman, those of us with uh, Herculean appetites for the diverse and the bizarre, even those of us who... Uh, have shown an aptitude to uh, to uh, uh, fight the good fight and stay the good long battle. Even those of us can get tired. And your boy is tired after 30 consecutive nights. I have a half hour to go, and I'm going to do that half hour because I'm a pro. That's what pros do. I'm a professional. Look it up in the book. Okay. That's what we do. We're pros. We're never rude. We don't cop out. We don't tell you that we're ill or that we're looking for the farmhouse in the middle of the desert or that we're parched. We don't tell you that maybe the check didn't come through this month, and where the hell does it go anyway if you're a guy who's left 16 forwarding addresses? Okay. So what do you do? What is the answer? Yeah, you're a little perturbed now. Kind of worried about the club. I don't, so, I don't worry about the club. Worry about maybe Jackie might worry. <laughs> nah, don't worry. <laughs> oh, God yeah, was was he was having a meltdown nah, nah, nah. from the mediocrity. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> he was having an artistic <laughs> moment in his life. Like he was really oh, wow. having a moment of clarity <laughs> of how, wow, is how that awful great? he's been and how awful you are. <laughs> like, Holy jeez. Is this, this it? Sounds like Frankie Blue. <laughs> we should play the Frankie Blue. Frankie tapes. Blue drunk tapes. Those are classic. But all right, and then uh, Larry finishes up with this guy. Okay, just cool it. Life is a breeze. Of course, some breezes, as you know, are 110 miles an hour and get promoted up to hurricanes. I just thought I'd pass that along. We're uh, Speaking of pass it along, we're going to pass along now to the newsroom, the mutual newsroom, high atop the overlooking downtown, beautiful downtown studios of Wallace, Virginia, Washington, D.C. <laughs> the mutual newsroom will get us up to date on the news headlines, and we'll come back with a little more open phone America. We'll have our salute to my man, Duke Zebert. By taking him to uh, one of his favorite places, one of mine too, the town of Cooperstown, New York. This is the Larry King Show in Washington, and we'll be right back. Wow. Wow. 
Wow. Poor guy. <laughs> That's how I feel about him. This is poor Larry. Drunk and tired of it all. <laughs> but you know what? I just found this business, and again, I, I like the guy is um, uh, Alan Combs from uh, Hannity and Combs. Oh, yeah. And just talking to him, and this is my, my opinion of, of the situation. It's like when you, this business, when you kind of want to be a crusader, when you have some ideals, mm -hmm. you just meet Sean Hannity, and he clicks his heels as he's destroying a life. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and Alan just... It just you you get like that. That's that's right after he would. This is probably when Larry King was a crusader. Then he realized what am I even fighting for, and then he became what he is now. Yeah, just a dude that goes, huh? Huh? Why? That's what happened. The Motley Crew. I think Alan had a, had he was a crusader. Alan was a a damn like idealist, and then he just goes, wait a minute, they don't. They, they, did Bill Bill O'Reilly just argue with Geraldo? And then afterwards, they kissed each other like they were in an MMA fight. <laughs> <laughs> like good one. Like just, they don't care. No, no, it's it's and not. It sounds like a guy who realized no one cares. He gave up. Gave up the fight on that's, all that's, that. Uh, that's a great observation about uh, good, Larry King. There, the good fight. Yeah, um, that tape reminds us of the famous Frankie Blue. We haven't done it in a while. You want to do the Frankie oh, Blue? Oh, please, I want to hear Frankie Blue. The story goes here in New York. Uh, Frankie Blue is a huge program director in the, uh, what what format was that? Dance. It was kind of a dance. He was at Z100 dance and then pop KTU, or something. which was pop dance. For pop like dance, but he was years. he was the program director yep. when it came to this format. And they had like a Christmas party here in New York, and everyone got allegedly tanked. And then uh, the night girl had to go on the air, and, and what did he say to her? He pissed her off that she walked off her show. Well, he was upset that she didn't come to the Christmas party. Right. And uh, so he uh, kind of told her what he thought of her non-attendance. And I think he said she wasn't, she thought she was too good. Right. And it comes up. And then. Uh, and then he, like she marches uh, out of the studio. He is wasted. Now he needs to go on the air because <laughs> he just lost his jock. Yeah. <laughs> and by the end of his air shift, he was fired. The, this legendary program director just fired. Does he still exist? No, I, we haven't heard from him since the end of Frankie Blue. Is what not, we oh yeah, yeah, this is it. Business. Yeah, the, this was the Jimmy the Greek tape. Yeah, yeah. remember when Jimmy the Greek went wow. off? Wow, and you just never saw him again ever. And we had some guys. Uh, let's just say we had some guys, big fans of the show, and uh, that's how we got this. That, this should have never seen the light of day. These tapes. No one was recording this at home. We. We, it, this is an inside job. It's right off the board. Yeah. So here's uh, Frankie Blue. Listen to this, Patrice. Uh -huh. I love this song. Nelly featuring Tim McGraw. <laughs> this is Frankie Blue. Now, you know, for the last several weeks, we've been um, giving you a chance to win $50,000 in cash in the Mix 1027 redo and plus win a Toyota Scion. And I think that is going to happen tomorrow morning. <laughs> tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Ricky, RuPaul, Kim will pick a winner and go to that winner's house like publishing clearance or whether it's a house or it's a job. We're coming we, to you, baby. We're going to find you and we're going to reward you with $50,000 in a brand new Toyota and um, I don't I don't see how you cannot be happy about that. This is Frankie Blue. Um, so make sure you're listening tomorrow about 8 a.m. Um, 50 grand prize winner. 50 grand prize winner. That's right. 50 grand prize winner. He got that all wrong, by the way. It's It's... A fifty grand, right? He's talking about like fifty thousand dollars, right? Yeah, fifty grand prize winner, or and he made it sound like there's fifty grand prize winners. Yeah, <laughs> he's so hammered. He's just hammered. Um, so make sure you're listening tomorrow about eight a.m. 
Um, 50 grand prize winner. 50 grand prize winner. That's right. 50 grand prize winner of the redo contest of the winner of the Toyota Scion. Come on, baby. You know you want it. If you have qualified in the past several weeks, we're going to pick the winner tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. RuPaul's going to dip his big old hands in there, oh. pick the winner, and we're going to find you. And then I don't care if it takes all day. It's worth the $50,000 in the car. All right, we have the armored truck. We've got the party patrol vans. We've got the car. We've got everything. But more important than that, we got the best music in town. So why don't you give me a call? By the way, that was supposed to take maybe 20 seconds. Oh, yeah. That was well over two minutes of him just babbling. Yeah, that was a wrong. quickie. Yeah. 50 grand. Grand prize winner. 50 <laughs> grand prize winner. See, the jocks are supposed to act that way, not the program director. He's on the air. This was after a Christmas party? Oh, yeah. Yeah, after a Christmas party. Why would he get fired after Because he got, he got into a little brawl with uh, the jock that was supposed to be on, um, this chick that was supposed to be on, and uh, told her to leave. He's like, screw you, leave. I'll do the, your shift. And gets on there hammered. And uh, just starts to do this. I'd yeah. listen to the show every night. Oh, Thank hell you. yeah. Thank you. That's what I, I we said. For the most part, especially on these uh, these these music radio stations, no one gives a crap what the DJ like, saying oh my in between God, the Frankie records. Blue is on. I got to go yeah. home and listen to Frankie Blue just babble. Yeah, we play a game. We guess what he's on. Of course you would listen to this every day. I would encourage this if I was the program. And director. you hear the music in the, that crazy, like perfect music that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Fifty grand prize winner. Yeah. And you know he picked this uh, music bed because this is what he was feeling, if you know what I mean. You know, oh yeah. <laughs> doing his little, his, you know, because he probably was just in the closet, just a little yeah. quasi gay, <laughs> two fingers in the air snapping, and he just. Woo! Got some glow sticks. Yeah. Just doing his hands in a, in a helicopter. Yeah. With uh, glow sticks. <laughs> oh. Shaking his hips. Sucking on a lollipop. Up, crawling across the soundboard with, on his knees with a with something <laughs> in his mouth, you know, just yeah. being a cat. <laughs> <laughs> you want to hear more Frankie Blue? Oh, you got yeah, to. We got one more clip Frankie. of Frankie Blue. I think this is where he's hiccuping and we thought he cursed. I don't know. Mix 1027. The new Mix 1027. This is Frankie Blue. And I am so excited for tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow. He does a Foster Brooks. So excited for tomorrow. <laughs> what was that? That was your classic drunken hiccup. He was the man. He hasn't been heard from since. God, no. This was it. Why would they destroy this man? I am so excited for tomorrow. <laughs> I got Ricky and Rue coming in in the morning, putting their hand in the big old barrel and picking out a $50,000 grand prize winner. The winner of the KTU Mix 102 Redo Contest. And also you win a Toyota Scion. Now what's going to happen is they're going to pull, they're going to they're gonna put their hand in the barrel, they're going to pick out a winner, and then they're going to f*** that winner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He like dropped the f bomb. To this point, we don't. It, it sounded like he said we're gonna blank the winner. Yeah. <laughs> and he also said the wrong uh, radio station in there. Yeah. Right. Right. Uh, yeah. Yep. So oh, it wasn't KTU. No. And he's the program director. They're trying to get this new thing happening, which went went away after they fired him. Now they're doing fresh over. What are they doing over there? Forget right. fresh. Yeah. 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 He he was talking about a station he used to work at. Yeah. Uh, Listen to him. That basically, you know, they they. F their own listeners. Listen to this. They're going to put their hand in the barrel. They're going to pick out a winner. And then they're going to f that winner. Wait, wait a minute. Oh, 
listen, the guy is so there, though. If you listen to that one part again, he's he's just, you know he's gyrating. He's building up with the music. Yeah, yeah. He's going 50. He's into, mm, he's yeah, into ding, what's ding, going ding, on. Ding. Listen to, like, how he builds up with the with the music that's playing. He's right there. Someone else is saying that Scions aren't even Toyotas. Well, it's a it's a Toyota brand. It's a made All by right, Toyota. Right. Toyota. So we get a little yeah. too picky. All right. Yeah, come on. Now what's gonna happen is they're gonna pull. They're gonna they're gonna put their hand in the barrel. They're gonna pick out a winner, and then they're going to. <laughs> winner. And that winner will be rewarded with everything. Mix one zero two seven. Frankie Blue. What's happening? By the way, if you're in that format. Your whole job is to make sure you shut the f up before the vocals yep. kick in, and he's so wasted. They start saying, <laughs> right, I'm doing that. But, uh, "But this is genius, though." <laughs> yeah, I listen to this every night, and I hate that music. What do you got, Stunt Bray? Well, we've analyzed that over and over a million times, and when he hiccuped before, that's exactly what it sounds like when he's saying "find." But putting that hiccup in the middle of the word "find" makes it sound like sound he like the, the f bomb. Yeah, yeah, and there's no way around it. It, it sure sounds like the f bomb toss. Who knows? I love this guy. Yeah. I, I miss him. Somebody he's, find him. He's here and he's trying to get back in the business. And he's actually, a, he's a decent guy. I think we've all, I work for him. I've for never like met the 12 guy. 12 years. I could care less. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest with you. Stunt Brain has a soft spot in his heart. That's all right. Cool. That's why Stunt Brain's been able to last in this business for two decades. Yeah. Because he he's nice to everybody. Uh, me, I could care less. I've never met the guy. I think this is hilarious. Oh, you'd like him, and you he you could tell him I'd listen to that every night, and he'd say, "I wish it was back on." Yeah, he's a good guy. <laughs> all right, we'll uh... look at Stump Brain keeping uh, his jobs and keeping all options open, not burning a bridge. Yeah, if you're just tuning in, um, Saturday we did our comedy show at the PNC Bank Art Center, the last virus show ever. Yep, we have to finally put it to bed. And uh, one of the reasons is because uh, these, a lot of the comedians are scared to perform in front of our audience. Yeah, because they're animals. And we do have uh, uh, just a couple quick clips of Mike Birbiglia getting booed. A guy that is is a seasoned comic. Mm -hmm. And the video is up on onday.radio.com. It's linked up there. All right. We'll play a little bit of the audio next. It's the Opie and Anthony Show. Opie and Anthony. Opie and Anthony. Still a little tired from the weekend, man. We had a huge party at the PNC Bank Art Center Saturday. I heard about 10,000 people were there. Maybe more. And for the most part, it was a success, but uh, yeah, we made the announcement earlier. And it was something we've been thinking about for a while, but we're making it official. You just, uh, you just saw the last uh, virus show. We had a really, really, really tough time getting the lineup together this year. A lot of people said no. A lot of friends of the show saying no, by the way. Don't be confused. Uh, a lot of uh, people that love doing this radio show. But, uh, you know, there's been a lot of chatter in the uh, comedy community. And uh, quite frankly, there's a bunch of guys not willing to go in front of uh, the our animals. audience. Because they've heard the stories. It all started with Bill Burr and uh, Don Marrera and uh, Jimmy Schubert down there in Philly. I remember that. Three debacle. solid comedians that have done very, very well in their careers. But uh, our fans booed them. And then they uh, decided to boo Bill Burr in Cleveland because they wanted to recreate the... Uh, the, mo the, uh, the uh, Bill Burr uh, debacle, the whole that booing thing and how Bill turned it around and... It's just, that was one of those magic moments that just don't happen time and time again. So the fans thought that, you know, they know what's going on, so they decided we got to recreate this moment in Cleveland, and that was a real bummer up there. And then we moved on, and then we did the animation festival where it was all about showing people some animations, but Ant and I decided, ah, let's throw some comedians, maybe some newer guys that they haven't really seen yeah. as far as our show goes, and, uh, you know, they'll enjoy that in between some of the animations. They decided sure. to boo, uh, what, two out of the three guys? A boo. Uh, Dan Natterman and uh, what's his name? Uh, Russ Russell Neve, Neve. Who's, yeah. a, who's a very good comic. Hysterical. And then uh, we get to Saturday. See, and, and because of all that stuff that we just talked about happened, it made other comedians kind of kind of scared to do our show. Yeah, they said, screw that. I'm not getting out there in front of those animals. Well-established guys. Mm -hmm. So we had a real tough time getting the lineup together. Uh, the guys that did it, they did great. Very happy they did the show. Uh, but I, uh, I, we're done. 
<laughs> we're done. <laughs> we don't know what else to do. Yeah. And, and we were excited, too, because the show was going so well, and then Mike Birbiglia went out there, and he just got treated like S. He really did. Whether you like him or not, uh, like we said last time, the audience didn't even give him a chance before you start booing. When you're booing after the first minute, you're not giving a guy a chance. When he came backstage afterwards, it was just like uh, he should have been on the ground with someone over him going, Stay with me, Mike. <laughs> yeah. Stay with me, Mike. Come on. Come on. Morphine. Carmen. <laughs> and people throwing it back in our faces, you know, we tra uh, uh, that we trained them to be like that. What do you guys do when someone uh, bombs on your show? You boo them. Yeah. But you got to understand the, the, the bigger picture. You guys mm -hmm. did what you did, and now we can't do the show anymore. We just can't do the show anymore. It was a so many guys. It was very yeah, triumphant. so many guys said no to doing the virus show this year, and then Kenny, Kenny saved everyone's asses in the parking lot. Right, uh, parking lot, right, Kenny? Yes, yeah, because I, you know, the tailgate I think is more important than the comedy show. You know, pe people just love that party. They love the party atmosphere. And, and to make a long story short, um, they started arriving about noon time. All right, and 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 a few people got in, started setting up their tents and setting up camp and the parties. Well, the, the staff from PNC doesn't get there till two o'clock, so two o'clock they started shutting down the parking lot. Yeah, and that's when you know security and parking staff, the troopers get there. So when they shut down the parking lot, I got a call from Brother Elmo, and he's like, you know, help. So I had to get the building manager. All right, I you know it took me a while. It was a process. Because I had to get them on board first, because you know they got a a, a a a history of you know kids ODing in the parking lot. Yeah, that's the problem. Is other shows have really uh, kind of ruined it. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we uh, and we were talking to some of the troopers, saying you know obviously they were doing what they were told to do, right. but it's a different situation. We do have animals once they get in there and the booing and all that and stuff. But out at the tailgate parties. Uh, it's one of the most peaceful crowds you're gonna see. It's it's a lot of fun. Absolutely, people. You know, they're drinking and barbecuing and stuff. But I think never most, a problem. And I think, uh, in all fairness, most of those guys get it. They get yeah, the uh, absolutely. The, they get the bigger picture. Like, all right, I might not like one of the guys uh, that Opie and Anthony picked for this show, but I'm not gonna sit there and be, you know, boo guy because I know I yeah. want to continue partying in the parking lot with the ONA community, mm -hmm. and I want to go to other events because. Because it's, it's all encompassing. It's, Some it's people a, just hang out for the tailgating. Oh yeah, they, they don't never even go come inside. inside. I know. Right. Never go inside. I know that. And one they said there was eight, eight something inside, and I'm, I'm thinking there was probably close to what, a thousand people outside. <laughs> I don't know, but they're saying there was about ten thousand people there. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if they were all inside the venue. Is what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, but go ahead. Ken. But I, I, you know, and. One thing, you know, we don't have like a, a an underage crowd too, so that was one thing in our favor uh, regarding the tailgating. So I get the building management on board, you know, because they have a blanket policy, only open the doors, you know, parking lot two hours before uh, show time. Then I got another call from Brother Elmo. Not only did they close the parking lot, now they're kicking everybody out. Yeah. All right. So now, you know, I know I I, I gotta I gotta do something, you know. So I'm talking to building manager. So I say, you know, can I talk to the to the troopers? And I want to thank the New Jersey State Police wholeheartedly and Live Nation for letting us have our tailgate party. So, but when I'm out there talking to the troopers and I'm uh, I'm like doing some double talk to try to convince them, like, you know, we gotta have our party here. And and this is what proves that the fans are their own worst enemies. Somebody yells out. Fight the power, Kenny. <laughs> yeah. Which would have just uh, shut up. Yeah. That's the last thing a trooper wants to hear. Yeah, like I just got them. They're on the fence, and I got them, you know, uh, you know, to almost say yes. You know, I'm promised there are not going to be any problems, you know. Uh, and then all of a sudden, you know, they're, they're yelling out, you know. And the trooper told me, he said, uh, he goes, we got a lot, bunch of people outside that want to come in. He goes, and they're looking at the people that are in here, and they got tents set up, and they're barbecuing, and they're wondering why they can't get it. Well, see, that, that was... And that's what he said. He said to me, he goes, so he goes, look, just make it look like you guys are taking some stuff down, and, you know, so at least we can tell them, yeah, we're, we're making them leave. But he, he pretty much told me, look, just give it a good look. Make it look like you guys are leaving. Right. And, uh, yeah. That was my biggest bargaining point is that they weren't consistent and it yeah. wasn't fair to have some people in then turn others away. Right. You yeah. know? So well 
we got a guy named Fear in New York City. I feel bad for Mike Birbiglia. He should have been given a shot, but it was also just bad timing that he came on after that stupid car giveaway. That really sucked with the camera continually going off, and the crowd was not happy. I was so pissed off about how the car giveaway went down. That oh, it was supposed to be, it was supposed to be on stage in front of the eight to ten thousand people. And then Pete told me, "Well, we can't get it on stage." He goes, "But we could, put, we could do it on the side of the stage." I'm like, "Okay, at least that side of the stage and the lawn people would would get into the excitement of the thing." And then we show up at the venue, and he tells me we have to do it backstage. I'm like, "How is that gonna work?" Right. And then the camera guy, and and he's been with us a while. He tripped over his own wire, and he ripped out his cords, and then they're duct taping it, and that's why the damn thing was going on, going off, going on, going off. Yeah. And we should we should be prepared for all this stuff. I mean, can I say, from a comic mm -hmm. standpoint, the lineup, too, in, in Birbiglia's defense, the lineup is Voss, who had to do the taming. Yeah. Then it was Di, Di Stefano Strong, mm -hmm. a strong, like, a comic that should be there. Uh, Di Stefano. Then after him is Bobby, who killed before because they know him. And right. Bobby should have been way later yeah. in the set. Then it's Otto. Way later in the set. Then it's me. Very early in the set. Then, <laughs> <laughs> then it's intermission. Yep. And so that's drinking, and then a couple of wait, and then your doo doo on the uh, lip video. Actually. Yep. I had then I had followed the doo doo on the lip video. Mm -hmm. Then after that. It was an evening with Jim Brewer, yeah. who headlined. Well, he was the special and, guest. And, and, but wait, he, held, he destroyed. But let me explain what happened with Brewer. Like he was really nervous because he hasn't uh, performed in front of uh, the ONA crowd in a long time. And I, we all knew that they were. He could have done the ABCs, and the, the fans would have loved him because they haven't seen him in so long. Uh, besides, but that wasn't the case. He had great material, and he had, oh, it was amazing. Destroyed. But he goes, dude, I only want to do ten minutes. I'm not really feeling this. It's been, you know, it's been too long. I just want to kind of go out there, say hi, tell a few jokes, get off. I'm like, dude, that's perfect. Ten minutes, wonderful. Uh, we figured it out he was out, up there for forty minutes. He was, <laughs> that's how much fun he was Brewer. having. It was a, it was a, it was a royal performance with Jim Brewer. <laughs> <laughs> royal performance. Then, then after Jim kills, yeah, you. There was the first half of the car giveaway. Yeah. Then with the camera going out, because then after we went to I think Greg Giraldo, I started asking people how did that look, how did that look, and we were excited because we thought we were doing okay with what we were doing with that dumb thing, and then I find out ah oh, well uh, some camera problems. I'm like you got to be effing kidding me. Giraldo goes up, and they were welling up, but Giraldo tr was a trooper. I was sitting in the audience watching it. Giraldo, Greg Giraldo killed. Yeah. Then the car giveaway, and not only the car giveaway finale, um, 25 tender little delicious things that come and dance around the winner. Yeah. And then, ladies and gentlemen, Mike Birbiglia. Yeah. Yeah. That the was timing a little... might have been a little bad, too. Ladies and gentlemen, a guy we don't really know. Uh, well, that's why I was surprised he was so late in the, mm -hmm. the show, too. That's a tough spot. You got to get the guys, you know, late in the, in the, in the lineup yeah. that have been around a while. But if someone said, no, no, it'll be great, it'll be great this way. Trust me, it'll be great. I heard that. I was uh, like, all right. That wasn't a good idea. All right. <laughs> and this is what happened. All right. All right. I don't know. Yeah? What are you booing? How come? All right, you guys. I'm going to sit like this until people cheer. He wow. sat down. He's like, all right, I'll just sit until you stop booing. Uh, I, and I, I can't stress enough. This is what hurts us as we try to get other comedians other comics. to do our show. Yeah. It's over, Johnny. I'm telling you. There's nothing else we could do. The list of people that said no, I was amazed by. And, Some and they didn't want to, and, to the credit of the crowd. Yeah, and they didn't want to <laughs> hopefully admit it's because of this type of uh, reaction or this type of treatment, but we all knew. You know that was you can hear and then mike did a great thing and he almost got him back he decided all right i'm gonna go in the audience and 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 ask these people why they're booing and no one had a really good reason why they were booing all right <laughs>
<laughs> here we go. Funny. Yeah. All right, here we go. Hold on. All right, man. Here, I'm going to hold the microphone, okay? It's 100 degrees. Why the f*** you have a sweatshirt on? That's a good point. Because I am pudgy. And I don't know if you know about sweatshirts, but they cover your d really well. And, and he got a good laugh. He kind of got some laughs, and then they just turned on him again, you know? Well, what was really cruel... Well, first of all, that came up a lot, that they were booing because he was wearing a, a, a sweatshirt. <laughs> well, yeah, that's a good reason to And then boo. the sick Fs. <laughs> I don't want to say this is funny, but if you're going to boo, it's kind of clever. Uh, they allowed Mike... They all would just be quiet to hear a joke... But barely, but they weren't weren't really hearing the joke. They were just waiting for the joke to end. Oh, those bastards! And then bastards. they would start booing again. That's how sick some of these guys. Oh, that are. is evil. So all of a sudden, like Mike's up there feeling good. He's like, okay, they're gonna quiet down. Let me do my my stuff. But they didn't want to hear his stuff anymore. They just wanted to really make it hurt. So they were quiet enough for Mike to tell one of his little jokes, and then they would boo. I think we might Oof. have that here. That's him throwing the mic down oh, and walking off stage. That's how he ended it. And then someone writes, uh, why didn't you and Ant go out there and, and tell him to stop booing? Oh, stop. That that's never the, That's never the last works. thing a comedian wants is us to go out there and try to help him out. And it doesn't work. That's like your dad coming to school to take care of the bully for you. Hey, now, you're going to come out like the, the teacher? Right. When the uh, auditorium is acting up, when the class president is trying to give a speech? Yeah. Hey, hey, now, you... I just want to go on record and say I like Mike Birbiglia, and I like his stand-up. What can I tell you? What can I tell you? Uh, looked like he was shell-shocked. Uh, left early because of the audience. Uh, Sean, what's up, buddy? Hello. Hey, Sean. Hey, uh, I was in about the seventh row during the show. Yeah. And um, everybody that was booing around us, they kept talking about how they were from New York, so I just wanted to... Uh, Say that it wasn't a lot of the Jersey people; it was mostly the New York people, and they were hammered. They were just booing. I think they wanted another Bill Burr rant that he did down in Kansas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you can't redo a moment. People don't Moments understand are... that. They think I'm going to be part of this. Shut up! Stop booing. Yeah, it... Moments are moments for a is... reason. Like everything aligns perfectly. You can't recreate that stuff. But why no. you just they... got to let it happen? Why wouldn't they do that with anybody else on the show? Like why was they? Why was Mike the the, the target of unfamiliar to our audience? Yep. they just don't want to sit through it. And so, how are we supposed to bring on newer guys that might be great? You got to start now, and then by the Cultivate. next virus in two thousand nine, people will know. Now we're done. I'm serious. Already had the conversation. We're done. It's a good place to to you know put this to bed. We did fourteen or fifteen of them. Wow. It was so tough getting this one together. I miss you guys. A lot of sleepless <laughs> nights, a lot of stress. What do you mean he's saying no? Well, you know, huh? Uh, Unbelievable, because though. Because of what happened with, you know, at, uh, mostly because of the animation festival. That was the biggie. That was the biggie. All right. <laughs> All right. Can I say where you're going to be this weekend? Oh, man. Of course, Patrice. Where are you going to be? be at the Punchline on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. California. It's a great comedy club. I'm, I'm one of my top five in the country. I'll be on a, I'll be on my top five what, tour. What makes it such a good club? Because I, I was out there seeing Norton. And it's a lot of people, and I, I'm at Punchline. Cobbs is out there too, but I'm at the Punchline. It's intimate, and but there's a lot of people. It's like a 250 seater, but it's very they're in your face. And well, what's weird is it's such a liberal city, and a lot of liberal cities and comedy. It's a little they're weird, not, but but, like but, a, but yeah. for some reason it works there. They're beautiful, man. Like Great they, comedy. They, they don't mind. They don't mind you going after all the uh, nah, man. They, after they, all the no nos, they like it. And <laughs> there's a lot of Asians in the audience, which is amazing. 
Yeah, you like that, Patrice? It's just in- interesting. Big ones that behead people? Be- or Beheading ones. <laughs> no, I get the little ones. Canada gets those big, juicy big ones. Beheading ones. Take your nugget right off. Start yeah. eating you. <laughs> God <laughs> damn, what a nut. Let's go to Kevin. Kevin, what's up, buddy? Hey, go. Hey. You warned everybody, man. You said, hey, cool it. After the animation festival. I don't understand. Hell, in Albuquerque, we, I drove 570 miles to Vegas. I didn't see that problem one, dude. Well, yeah, we did. Mm. We pretty much begged everyone to cool it after the animation festival, just because we had the big picture in mind. We wanted to kind of protect this thing and and let it survive. But uh, we don't know what else to do. We got to we got to just uh, say goodbye to it at this point. We just have to. Well, you know what? I mean, uh, the best out west are behind you, man. So. Well, the Vegas show was pretty solid back in the day. All right, thank yeah, you, I thank mean, you, I Kevin. That's not what's behind you, but. All right, brother. We're off to XM, you guys. Uh, Patrice, thank you. You were great today. Thank you. And uh, everyone's talking about Patrice and his comedy lately. They should have been talking about your comedy years ago, by the way. But uh, he did the. Oh, Mont- he sucked a little back. <laughs> <laughs> he did the Montreal Comedy Festival, Ooh. and he Ooh. was the talk of Montreal. Yeah. Which is really, really big in this business. Day over there in and you know it, too. You're not even going to downplay it. No, Everybody was I'm talking about what you were doing up there. Actually, yeah. And I think it I has think a lot to do with uh, his, his uh, new attitude, the way he dresses now. Dresses better. Well, thank you, sir. Uh, th- <laughs> and, <laughs> thank you, Mr. Anthony. Thank you, Mr. Anthony. <laughs> and he's wearing the uh, dead guy hat. What? Blues guy, dead guy hat. Oh, like dead blues guy? Yeah, who, who just died that had a hat like that? Don't oh, say that. I don't know uh, BB? No, BB's still alive. Who's the other dude? Alive. Who the hell? Who died? Muddy Waters. Bo Not Diddy. Muddy Waters. Bo. Yeah, this yeah, you got Bo Diddy Diddly. Hat. You got the Bo Diddley hat. Bo Diddley. Don't say that. Bo Diddley hat. I got to change this. It's a good look, though. All right, our music's over now. Let's get out of here. All righty. Good morning, people. Welcome to XM Sirius Radio. Sirius it's XM Radio. Sirius XM now. Sirius XM Satellite Radio. This is what it's called. Sirius XM. I would imagine Satellite that they're going to take that and make it into one thing eventually, right? Sirix? I don't know. Because it's. Sirixum? I think there's a reason they didn't come up with a new name yet. Maybe because it's on too much packaging. Because they never knew that the merger was actually going to happen. Because how could Sirius XM Satellite Radio. Be rolls a good off the tongue name. like a cinder block. That's just like saying Pepsi or yeah, <laughs> you know, Sirius XM satellite radio. Sirius XM. <laughs> it's like open the knee and anthem and then how many days? I'm assuming this is the week they uh, start talking to Super Agent Bob Eatman, right? Right, Ant? Well, I I would hope so. How, you know. many, how many days are down? Fifty-seven to? days. Fifty-seven All days right. left in our uh, contract. Plenty of time. Plenty of time, sure. Like Christmas, isn't it, or something? Yeah, we're going away for a week, you know. So, ah. so there's nine days. Ah. <laughs> yeah. There's nine days. So if we get to Friday without them talking, then add another nine days onto that, then it's starting to get a little scary here. A little bit. We'll be fine either way. We'll figure it all out in the end, right? Mm-hmm. Speaking of satellite radio, I guess uh, Bubba the Love Sponge is now backing off some of the things he said. Oh, really? What we, happened? These clowns that, we, that we're in this business with. Bunch of clowns. Well, first of all, he's, he, he's saying he doesn't understand why we attack him, but the well, only time we've ever even thought of that guy was when he gets on the air and, and says something about us and it gets back to us. Like he's, he's said plenty of stuff, I, I'm sure, but only until it gets back to us and it's really ridiculous do we even bring anything up. We don't, For the most part, who cares what he says? We don't openly search out our enemies it's usually because no. one of our awesome fans mm-hmm. i like to call him awesome awesome you're an awesomer how many awesomers do we have listening to us unless they're in front of a festival crowd <laughs> <laughs> and they're horrid people not all of them but we don't know what else to do I'm, I'm, yes I'm all of them <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> that's the dilemma we know most most of them behave, but uh, that's why I keep yelling and screaming, squash the haters, because you know there's a bigger picture here we're trying to we're trying to uh, look at. Yeah. But my freedom must is... shut up. You're not a fan anymore. You're a hater, and that's your whole 
reason for for living is to hate everything we do and explain why it sucks and it's not like the old days. Thanks. That means you're not a fan anymore. That's all. What is like the that's old fine. days? Shut up. That's fine. If you're not a fan anymore, that's fine. But mm -hmm. don't claim you are and then do all that hating all the time. I'm, like, I'm not a puppet. Yep. So Bubba doesn't understand why we uh, we continue to attack him, but we weren't even acknowledging him until it got back to us that he was trashing us. Yeah, that's the only time we talk about this guy. I don't give this guy a, a, a piece of a thought unless I hear somebody say, oh, did you hear uh, he, he said something about you guys? Like, oh, what? Yeah. I cut I cut this clip down pretty heavily. I, this was in total. This was a, like a thirteen fourteen minute. Holy shit! Rant. And I, I, waste I, I, the trim, time. I trimmed it down to the meat and potatoes. Of, you know, just like a minute and a half. But no, no, he, what's, no. What's great about us too? <laughs> <laughs> it's what's great about us? Sorry, they're looking at me uncomfortable, but <laughs> uncomfortably. But like when we hear something like, uh, you know, Bubba saying that if O and A are part of this new company, Sirius slash XM Satellite Radio. <laughs> yeah. Easy name. Uh, that it's a deal breaker for him, and then we're fortunate enough to talk to Mel Carmazan, who's now running Sirius slash XM Satellite Radio. Yeah, he came on our show, and he didn't he didn't go on Bubba's show because he's only going Sorry. on the important radio shows. That's that's a yeah. fact. We all know that, Howard. right? Howard. And us. And we, we didn't think he was going to come on our show. And he's like, wow, he's showing that we're important by coming on our show. And we were quite flattered by that. A great show of good faith right there. I would imagine that if you're Bubba the Love Sponge, you're kind of disappointed that uh, the big guy's not coming on your show. Mm -hmm. And then to say that it's a deal breaker if we're going to be part of the new company. And then we tell Mel Carmes and what Bubba said. <laughs> yeah. Now, if you're Bubba the Love Sponge, you got to do what's called a little that... Uh, that uh, what? It's yeah. when you take the pedals. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and instead of going in a forward motion, <laughs> yeah, you go uh, the opposite way. <laughs> right. It's called back pedaling. That's right. And uh, that, he does that very well. All here. of a sudden, you have to learn the backstroke. Yeah. Yeah. You're you're all full of piss and vinegar yeah. going one way. Yeah. And then you got to turn around. Showing and your, look silly. Showing your true colors, by the way. That yeah. you're pretty much a wimp and you don't mean. <laughs> Anything you say. <laughs> all full of piss and vinegar. Yeah. That was one of my old piss man statements. Yeah. What do you think? You're all full of piss and vinegar? Yeah. You ain't got a pot to piss in or a window to throw it at her. Yeah. That was another one. And then everything else started with the N-word, so. Is Mr. Logan, <laughs> <laughs> Is Mr. Logan still on? Um... He's done. Elo's done. Officially done. He said your mom's box. He, it's over. over the phone. No, that was it. He's officially not an employee. Of he's wearing what? Ofra. He's with Ofra Winfrey. How about the great, great uh, Don Wicklin? Uh, I, I would imagine his days are numbered. He's, at this point. He could be fired right now, for yeah, all we, we know. We don't know. We don't know. All depends. So, uh, yeah. here we go. Five shoes with human feet have been found on beaches since last August. What? <laughs> Actual feet, right? Not just the sneakers. The feet are still inside. In them. the shoes. Can you get this audio? I, I've been uh, hearing I about lost this. my sneakers and my feet were in them. <laughs> right. They're trying to figure out why just feet are washing ashore in sneakers. Just the feet. It's fantastic. In the it? sneakers still. <laughs> Baffling foot mystery. That's it. <laughs> I know every serial killer wants their thing, but that's a weird one. I saw something just crawl across the uh, ticker up there on CNN also. What? Apparently, uh -oh, what? in Greece, what? a uh, guy decapitated his girlfriend. <laughs> Cut her head off. This is like becoming a big thing. You know, that's major surgery. You couldn't do spine. Oh, my God. It's everything that's in the body has to be cut through. The ligaments. Major, uh, major nerves, arteries. arteries, veins, bone, spinal cord. There's a lot of shit to cut through when you're cutting someone's head off. Yeah. That neck really is kind of the weak right. spot of this body, isn't it? Let's have fun oh, listening. thin and stupid. Let's have fun <laughs> listening. We'll get to the, those stories, absolutely. But let's have fun listening to what we like to call damage control by Bubba the Love Sponge. <laughs> uh, with regards to Opie and Anthony, uh -huh. they, they admitted <laughs> to <laughs> Mel that they've never met us and they don't really know us. So how can they talk the shit that they've talked about us? <laughs> See these guys? <laughs> well... Because you started it, you dope. First of all, we, I don't think you we fat ever, dope. ever initiated talking shit about you. We, we could care less about you. Now, now who, the Until person, you start attacking us. The person that originally talked shit about you mm -hmm. was Howard Stern. 
Yeah. That I remember uh, hearing years ago when Howard would uh, talk shit about Bubba mm -hmm. and how he doesn't want to ever be in a the business uh, in a business that has people named Bubba the Love Sponge in it and all that stuff. That was the first inkling I got that anyone named Bubba existed. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I guess when he got fired, it was in the news. Uh, when he got suspended, I'll be honest. When he got suspended uh, for that pig thing, that made the news. Uh, and then when he was fired, went uh, and ran for sheriff. I guess that I, was in the news. I really don't know. No, that was the. That's... I remember the 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 pig, or was it a boar? Yeah, a pig. Yeah, same. No, same he's shit. a boar. He killed a pig. <laughs> See, See why you're talking I, shit? I, I, no, no. Why you talking <laughs> shit? <laughs> but uh, no, those are the only things I knew because they were in the news. Yeah. Uh, and Howard like goofing on him. We never, never initiated talking shit about him because, yeah, A, we didn't know him from a hole in the wall. And uh, it wasn't, why would we do that? Well, who, who gives a shit? I'll be honest with you, too. We weren't competing with him. As we sit here on um, my daddy's birthday, uh, I don't even, it's all right. I don't remember, uh, I know he attacked us, and that's why we, we, did, we, we did what we do very well. We attacked back. Yeah, I don't even know what he said anymore because I, I could the care original less. thing. I, 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 I think it less. was I think it was something about because he was going to Sirius right and going to be on Howard's channel right, which uh, is like you know the the person that uh, was lucky enough to be on after Seinfeld right. Um, it, it it was one of those things where he then talked about our show and how we're failing and going to fail miserably and mm -hmm. how XM will go down the shitter and so, so he was just talking shit about us right. Uh, but, again, he didn't know us from a hole in the wall either. Right. So why was he starting shit? I don't know. Um, now that we're over at XM, there's a, there's another thing that's going on. Like, we lost Grand Rapids, Michigan. Those guys were trying to say that we suck and we have no ratings and all that. Anthony and I have, like, a major dilemma that we're trying to figure out. This satellite radio is certainly hurting what's going on on commercial radio. And we're trying to keep the two, you know, uh, floating. But it's mm -hmm. tough. Because a lot of people go, well, he's like, well, your ratings sucked and you guys suck. It's like, no, we don't suck. Our ratings in New York are massive. Our ratings in Boston are massive. Mm -hmm. And on satellite radio, we're pretty much the number one channel on the entire network. Yeah. But the problem is, if you get hooked on this show and you get satellite radio, of course, it hurts you listening on the regular radio stations. And that's our dilemma and has been our dilemma for about a year now. Yeah, because I love the people that are writing to. Oh, they suck now. No, we don't. I, there's there's, a, there's plenty of stuff that backs up the fact that we don't suck. Mel Carmen's not going on a radio show that sucks, but the haters out there they don't want to acknowledge that part of the whole nah. the whole fucking puzzle. So here's uh, Bubba doing what's called damage control. Talked about us and be the sniveling little pussies that they are behind their microphone. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if indeed, you know, to the to the highest being that we have in our entity, they admitted to him that they've never met us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's amazing. And for that matter, I don't think they've ever really met Howard either. Mm -hmm. No, I don't. They don't know Howard. And I, I still just can't get over the fact that they ask their fans, their pests, so to speak, mm -hmm. or their virus, or whatever the hell they got. Probably yeah. both. They probably they're, have both. they're faggots. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, <laughs> they're faggots. <laughs> Oh boy! I got here that again. Oh boy! That's not. That's not good. You don't. You don't want to rile them up. <laughs> Believe me, they're uncontrollable. Virus or whatever the hell they got. Probably both. They probably they're, have they're faggots. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Pedro. <laughs> to, to, for the life of me, man, I, you know, I, I'm not going to question Mel as to why he went on there. He, you know, obviously was trying to get the word out, but not going to question not Mel. Gonna question? As to why, here, let 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 me fill you in on why Mel came on our show, because where the show to go on on XM, as Howard, is the show to go on on Sirius. You are an offshoot on Howard's channel. That's all. Uh, Howard gets Mel to go on his show. On uh, Sirius, and since the merger went through, Mel decided to come on our show to show his good faith to this program that is doing very well on XM. There's no fucking mystery there. It's so easy to figure out. Is Mel going on fucking uh, the Bob Edwards show? No. He did. Did he? <laughs> no. Yeah, I swear no, he didn't. <laughs> Why would he go on that show? There's no one listening. Awkward. Fuck. Awkward. God, I should have dumped out of that. No, it, 
He went on Bob Edwards? <laughs> yes, he did. I, I questioned that one, too, to be honest with you. All right, so now the CEO's lost his mind. <laughs> right. Oof. All right, put it this way. He didn't go on, he didn't go on the 70s channel, did he? Right, oh, shit, been... he did. You should have said Cinemagic. XM Kids. Cinemagic. Cinemagic. Cin he didn't go on cinema. He went on fucking Bob <laughs> Edwards? Yes, now I feel shitty that he came on here. Honestly? I don't feel special anymore. Honestly, Bob Edwards never did as well as we did, but as far as that whole NPR world goes... Bob Edwards! He's still somebody. Boo! He's a ghoul. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's Bob Edwards and uh, Mel. <laughs> yeah, there's a wow. picture of Bob Edwards and Mel on orbitcast.com. And very ghoulish. You must need a very large coffin to sleep in at night. <laughs> there it is. Yep, Mel, yeah. uh... So. On a Bob Edwards. Oh, well, fuck me in the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, welcome, Mel Karmazin. Welcome. Boo. But there's no real reason for uh, Mel to go on uh, Bubba, you no. know, Bubba's show. There really isn't. No. He's a busy man. So uh, here's Bubba after, you know, the faggot thing. That's hilarious. Question Mel as to why he went on there. He, you know, obviously was trying to get the word out. But mm -hmm. for the life of me, I can't understand how... Mm -hmm. We would want them in any capacity when they are have been so adamant against this merger and they ask within their website what? for people to email the FCC to shoot. Wrongo! Wrongo again! What? And Mel Carmazin knows that didn't come from us, you dope. We were against the merger since when? How stupid is this guy? This guy is just blatantly lying on the air. You're a fat lying fuck. If, if, if you're getting on the air and trying to spread a lie like that, what are you trying to undermine us with the boss, you little faggot? Is that what you're trying to do? Look, they were against the merger. They, no, we weren't. Oh, man, are you a jealous fucking fat cocksucker? That's what you are. You're a fat fucking jealous douchebag. What's the matter? No attention from daddy? Daddy didn't come on your show? Go sit there in Howard's shadow, because that's the only reason anyone's fucking listening to you, and you know it. You fucking know it. You run your own channel. Get a Bubba channel and see how well that fucking does. What a loser fucking asshole. <laughs> Go ahead. More lies. We were against the merger? Are you out of your fucking mind? Ugh. We were privy to uh, what this merger meant for both companies, you dope. God damn, what a fucking asshole. Basically, XM would not have survived if the merger didn't go through. So why would we be against yeah, that? Yeah, we're against it. Why? In a perfect world, would we have loved to have uh, two separate companies and continue you know, being successful in XM? Sure. Check sure. your shit before you say it. Sure. Like, before I call you a big, disgusting, fat cunt, uh, <laughs> I look at the website, and I see a picture of you being a big, disgusting, <laughs> fat cunt. So when I call you a big, disgusting, fat cunt, it's accurate. Because I see you as a big, disgusting, fat cunt. So, but you saying that we are against the merger, is you're full of shit. Holy God. Wah, wah, wah. All right, let's, let's listen to more damage control. Are have been so adamant against this merger, and they asked within their website for people to email the Wait, FCC when? to shoot the merger down. And it's like they're scrambling right now, and they're grasping right now for their next job. I think they should stick with terrestrial radio and CBS and see how that works out. Do you? Shut up. How about we do both uh, like you want to do, except uh, we do it successfully? How about that? How about that, you fucking idiot? And why don't you tell the fine folks why you had to go back to regular radio? Yeah, why don't you be honest about that? Why don't you uh, tell them that they weren't offering, it, offering you much money to continue Oops. on satellite radio? Oops. And you had some bills to pay. So now you have to do... This fucking guy has to do two radio shows a day. We do one long one. He has to do... I believe he's on in mornings, and then he has to do afternoons. Every fucking day. Yeah. Takes a few bucks to hold on to a hot chick, doesn't it, fatty? <laughs> believe me, I know. <laughs> but you're not fat. No, I got my own problems. <laughs> uh, How stupid is that to do two radio shows, mornings and afternoons? That's insane. Mm -hmm. But he, you had no choice now, did you, pal? 
palsy wowsy. <laughs> I can't fucking let it go. Uh, right. Call me a hillbilly from way back in the day. I can't let it go. That, that Howard means as much to me as what Richard Fabrizi or Manson or you or or the next person. That's how much I love this guy, and it's how 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 loyal we are. Holy shit! Hold guy. on, hold on. This is the same dick smoking fuckwad that bashed the shit out of Howard, bashed the shit out of Howard years ago. And because by the grace of fucking God, he he ap appointed you and anointed you so you could fucking uh, bow at his feet and be on his channel. Now you're talking like you fucking love to this guy, like he's your fucking war hero buddy. What are you insane? You fucking bad. Give me some tapes of Bubba calling Howard some of the worst fucking shit you ever heard. What was that, Bubba? Was it phony? Was but, it phony at the time? You didn't mean it? Well, Clear Channel... That's a love fest. Clear Channel was hoping that Bubba the Love Sponge was going to be like the Howard Killer. So what did they What they did was they put him on in moorings in, I think... Uh, in Hartford or some shit. Or New, somewhere New in Haven, Connecticut. Something that almost got into... Well, got into part of the New York market, and it was like a testing ground to see if it was going to work. Yeah. And he failed miserably. And he did so nothing but try to bash so Howard. So they never brought him uh, into New York City to do mornings. Because uh. he failed miserably. And now you're just cock-smoking him. D dude, you got the gig. You don't have to suck his dick anymore. You got the gig. And like I said, this was this was edited too. Like there was oh, just there was so oh, I love this love, guy. It was a love fest. It's a, he's as important to me as the, uh, this one and that one and my dad and 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 mommy and. Jesus, dude. Have some fucking self-respect. Have some pride. Oh, of course he doesn't. Have some pride. Have some pride. <laughs> Put on that Captain Hook uniform. <laughs> Boys down at IBM expect to see... It's how much I love this guy, and it's how, how, how loyal we are collectively to this guy. And I, I just can't for the life of me understand... What? And I'm, you might, you guys can, can sign Opie and Anthony up. Uh, you, you can put them on XM. You can put them on series. You can, but don't ever ask me to have to be in the same room with them. What are you We wouldn't fit about? in the same room with you. <laughs> it's an old honeymooners joke. What the fuck are you talking about? We're, we're, we're never in the same, same room. room with any of you put it this way, And put it this way. Let me be completely honest. If something happened where we had to be in the same room with you, you wouldn't do shit. You sit there and smile like every other phony radio cocksucker in this stupid fuckwad business that I got myself tied up in. You'd smile and wave and everyone would go, oh, yeah, yeah, well, you know how radio is. Why are we looking at the, uh... A Holy oh, shit! <laughs> why are we looking at a picture of the ball they drop every New Year's Eve? Here no. Is, what? Dude, he looks like that... the robot from Lost in Space. <laughs> <laughs> it's Bubba wearing a silver fucking button top. I don't know what that is. It's like a quilt. He's wearing a fucking duvet. He's wearing a silver bedspread. It's a, a jacket. Some kind of jacket. <laughs> oh my god. Holy shit. I will not be in the same room with them. <laughs> Dr. Smith. I do not understand. I respect Howard Stern. Warning! Warning! We are in the same proximity as Opie and Anthony. Warning! I am a fat fuck. <laughs> that is he went there. That's his, uh, a porn star, maybe? Is that a porn star? That's, that's not his chick. Yeah, that's a picture of a fat fuck right there. That is a fat fuck. And he thinks he's like a muscle guy, which is hysterical. He's always talking about kicking ass and being... He's not a muscle guy. He's a, guy he's a fat fuck! He's a guy that had to have his staple, uh, uh staple. His stomach his staple. His kitchen staple. Here's a guy that had to have his stomach staple because he eats too much. Yeah. Sorry, Steve. <laughs> yeah, well. He got the Steve surgery. Like you're not a muscle dude. So that's it. You're not this cool muscle guy. People look at you and go, "Wow, what a fat fuck Bubba is." And he's still a fat fuck even though he got his stomach stapled. How how does that Enough. happen? You're supposed to lose the weight. He, he looked you're trying in to the tell me it would be bigger than that if he didn't have his stomach stapled? Dude, he looked in the mirror before he left in that suit, too. <laughs> he fucking looked and said, that looks good. I'm going to make a fucking impression. 
All right, well, let's listen to the last clip because now he does some fine damage control, also some backpedaling and, and the, uh, the backstroke here because he did say that if we're part of the new company, it's a deal breaker. For deal him. breaker. We play the audio all that. what he that. said. Yeah, we, we check the facts. We play the audio. We don't just blurt shit out, dummy. All right, here we go. Fucking assholes. I'm so hot on this deal. You know what? I don't care if they have their own channel. I don't care if they're on XM. Mm. I don't care. What did we learn about the I don't care people? Means you care more than anything on the face of the earth. <laughs> when you say I don't care so many times, each time you say it, Look. It means 100 times more <laughs> that you care. <laughs> and we've been guilty of saying the I don't care. See, we do try yeah. to keep it honest here. But when anyone says I don't care, that means, oh, they care a fuckload. And look, I don't care. What's care, care, care. I care so much. Right, right. Where's the I don't care song? All right. I don't care. Hold on. We got to do a little. Uh... Stop whining. That's right. <laughs> Stop it. Stop whining. Who is your daddy? Stop whining. Quiet. Quiet. Hey, e Slob, can you at least fucking <laughs> tape this back together? It's been broken for like. <laughs> e Slob and <laughs> Danny just laughs. <laughs> All right, this is funny. Yeah. Do you want to hear the uh, the Bubba I don't care clip with the I don't care music, or you want to do it first without and then do it second? With... First without, so I could really get a good gist. All right, here we go. Fucking assholes! I'm so hot on this deal. You know what? I don't care if they have their own channel. I don't care if they're on XM. I don't care. You know, I gotta tell Bubba because you know this will get back to him. Of course, we will. get off on this shit. We yeah. got so under your skin, fat so. You you can't even understand <laughs> how fucking much we get off on this stuff. We're sick in the head. It is this is so, all we want from another jock is to know we got under their fucking skin. It's so great to listen to you fucking. Just groveling, pretty much. That's what he's doing. This is a way to grovel to the boss, mm -hmm. uh, kiss up, mm -hmm. uh, backpedal. It, it, you know how much we enjoy listening to this? And the fact of the matter is, it wasn't even us that brought it up. No. This all started I mean, with you. You, you fucking self. started the shit with, uh, you know, you, you, <laughs> it's a deal breaker. Yeah. So we just, hey, we, we, we relay it to Mel Karmazin. Yeah. Who then talked about, you know, Oh, well, uh, he's not on the board. That's yeah. what Mel said. He goes, well, Bubba's not on the board, so I don't know what kind of deal breaker this uh, means. And then he talked about how touchy and sensitive the deal was uh, between yeah. you and um, yeah. and Syria. So that was coming from the CEO, not some fucking jock that is lucky enough to be on Howie's channel um, and, and uh, uh, sitting there kissing up and backpedaling. Time to listen to someone that cares a whole lot. Yeah, every time he doesn't care, he so cares. Fucking assholes. I'm so hot on this deal. You know what? I don't care if they care. have their own channel. I don't care if cares they're on XM. I don't care if they're on cares Sirius. So much. I don't, I'm not going to like it. It ain't a deal breaker. Because I'm part of the fucking Howard family, brother. I'm, <laughs> I'm part of the Howard family, brother. Let me tell you something, brother. <laughs> well, good for you. <laughs> good for you, right. Whatever. <laughs> That's uh, like I said. It's like going on after Seinfeld. Or it's like having a great fucking uh, intro. Sure, of course it is. That's great. Guess what? You're part of the Howard family. We are Opie and Anthony. Yeah, we're part of our own fucking channel. You weren't a you weren't strong enough to make your own family. I don't know what Mel's gotten in, in mind if that's going to change or not. But the truth of the matter is, we've been here for years. We've been doing it. We've been very successful on uh, uh, 202 over here on the virus. And uh, you've been, you know, the show that's on after Howard. Yeah. Well, that's a good position. Yeah. Not the best position, though. It. Uh, I don't think it really showcases uh, your talent. <laughs> you know? <laughs> your scary fucking talent. <laughs> Christ almighty. <laughs> oh, my God. Look at him. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> what is he wearing? <laughs> I don't know. No, man. What is that? That's oh. a, a Bubba Army shirt. He looks like Meatloaf. He has Bubba really Army does. shirts? Bubba Army. Yeah. He's making fun of the pest? The mm. Army word is like a joke. Yeah, that's that why we came up with something really different. Silly. That, that's why I think we came up with something pretty original by saying pests. Much better than calling somebody an Army member. He's also wearing his own hat, by the way. That's a Bubba the Love Sponge hat. Oh, is it? Oh. Oh, that's Sorry. good. I don't mock it. I like it. Yeah. It ain't a deal breaker. 
Oh, no? I'm part of the fucking Howard family, brother. Ooh. I'm on that team, you stupid fuck. I'm on that team. We work smart. That's our guy. You guys are a bunch of fucking nerds. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Does he... Dude, you don't even understand how funny you are. And not in a good way. <laughs> and I think what... If I had to get inside his head, too, I think he, like, rants like this and, and says, Howard, 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 because he's really hoping for that moment with Howard. Howard doesn't give a shit about him in the end. No. You know? No. Howard's always played that way. He doesn't give a shit about Bubba the Love Sponge. You know? No. And and this guy's hoping that, oh, me and Howard. And Robin, Robin pretty much called him fat, too. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, radio job. Radio jocks don't have to be fat. Yeah. She goes, oh, I met Opie and Anthony at uh, yeah. one of the gigs. She goes, and they're not fat. And I guess you don't have to be fat if you're a jock. And then Bubba got all pissed off. <laughs> 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 yeah, we're one big happy family. Are you? Really? They call you fat. <laughs> fucking pussies. <laughs> they really are. Oh, I'm fucking full hot. I need to get. I need to dap up on an Adderall right now, ASAP. <laughs> Fact, you might want to get a needle and mainline it right into me. <laughs> Wrap oh it into a God. fucking hero. Watch a bunch of sniveling little bitches. You should have heard him today, Spike. You know what? I'll have Dave uh, burn it on CD for you to be able to listen. Sniveling? Okay. Too. Yeah. What? As far as us when were we to, sniveling? As far as us talking to Mel, that was that was uh, a very That's, good. That conversation. was sniveling. We asked some tough questions to Mel, and he answered them. I define sniveling as kissing ass. Getting on your knees and sucking a fucking ass. Just shoving your tongue up an asshole so you can keep your fucking job. That's what I see. That's sniveling. Hold on, I want to do this now. This you might recognize the sound, Bubba. I'm sorry. I'm eating. <laughs> but it's probably a very familiar sound to you. I don't care. Fucking assholes. I'm so hot on this deal. You know what? I don't care if they have their own channel. I don't care if they're on XM. I don't care if they're on Sirius. I don't, I'm not going to like it. It ain't a deal breaker. Because I'm part of the fucking Howard family, brother. I'm on that team, you stupid fuck. I'm on that team. We work smart. That's our guy. You guys are a bunch of fucking nerds. I don't get it. They really are. Oh, I'm fucking full hot. I need to get. I need to dap up on an Adderall right now, ASAP. <laughs> Fact, you might want to get a needle and mainline it right into me. <laughs> oh my God! No. Watch a bunch of sniveling little bitches. You should have heard him today, Spice. You know what? I'll have Dave uh, burn it on CD for you to be able to listen. Okay. Two. Yeah. <laughs> Why? <laughs> He's on the Howard team and stuff. Aren't we all one fucking company now? I guess. Dummy. Yeah, you dummy. Um, well, you said he's the show that came on after Seinfeld or somebody said that? Well, here's some of the other shows that followed Seinfeld. Uh -oh. Do you remember any of these? Veronica's Closet. Ooh, that was a good one. Suddenly Susan. Mm. Caroline in the City. Oops. Madman of the People. What? The Naked Truth and Fired Up. There you go. There you go. Nice and memorable. <laughs> and Bubba, the love sponge. Right. You're kind of more like the Fired Up. You're fired up after Seinfeld. He doesn't get it. Hey, back it's one down. company I now. Thought, I thought it was a deal breaker, buddy boy. The guy for years, since our first fucking day on satellite radio, has done nothing but preach our demise. Every fucking few months, he comes up with some other thing of why we'll be fired or uh, just let go by the company or fail or something. And you know something? We've been here for years. And now the company's merged, and we're still fucking here. And Mel came on the show, and we're going to be fucking signed, and we're going to fucking be on satellite radio, and you're still just going to try to keep this thing going of how we're failing and not doing well and going to be fired. Bubba, we're here. We're on your fucking company's airway. Um, we're going to uh, be on your company's fucking airway. In all airway. fairness, though, eventually he'll be right. Well... Because we'll be fired or we'll retire, and then he'll finally Done like that before. And then he'll finally go. See, I told you. I told you. <laughs> yeah, that's what they used to do on the New York radio message board. After like four years of fucking doing radio, yeah. we do something stupid and get fired. I told you this. See, I you told you know, I told all. you they'd fail in Look, New York. I told you all along. Wait a minute, fail in New York? What? No. Ugh, fuckers. I think it's too late. You can't use that excuse anymore, or, or whatever that uh, no. that tact. I was uh, when I was in the Hamptons. I'm listening to the radio and. The, the, this dude from from Florida, Bubba the Love Sponge, oh, yeah. who 
rapper's name is like Tony Schwartz or something, but now he's Bubba the Love Sponge. He was. I love that. See? I love this guy. He's the guy. There's loyalty. We're on Howard's team. We're on Team Howard. <laughs> this is Team Howard for you? What happened? All this shit just go away? Look, is this the guy that you probably at some point said you'd never be in the same room with? <laughs> like like you said about us? Yeah. You're a phony. You're a phony load of fucking fat shit. <laughs> Ugh. They were announcing that he was coming on the radio somewhere. And his between every song... They were playing songs about me sucking really bad. Really? Yeah, and I'm like, I I, I, I was listening to the station because they played heavy metal music, and I was working out. John, Stutter and John comes over to my house in the Hamptons. We're hanging out. I said, let's go work out in the gym. We're working out, and I'm listening to a rock station. So every between every song, they go, Bubba the Love Sponge is coming. And then they would play examples of Bubba the Love Sponge, which was basically my show. Uh-huh. And then, like, he played one song that had Kermit the Frog singing about sodomy. Because that's because he's crazy. He's wild. He's a wild guy, Bubba the Love Sponge. He's so wild that he'll, he'll have Kermit the Frog singing about sodomy, well, which, which was like, whoa. You know. <laughs> I want to apologize to Howard because that's basically what we're saying, and I swear we're not ripping you off. Oh, my God, that's Bubba. The, that's the same feeling we get when we listen to this guy. Wow, he's wild. He's, he's unpredictable. You don't know what he's going to do whoa. next. So, Bubba, do you listen to these tapes at all? Hey, Bubba, do you remember this? How does it feel now? You're on his team now. Yeah. Don't you feel that it isn't quite like you're on his team as much as you're his fucking whipping boy? Hmm? You know, oh, man. <laughs> Gee, that's different. Is that a bit from 20 yeah. years ago? Well, then I guess on tape he comes on and he goes, I'm, I'm going to... Howard Stern sucks. He's old. I, mean, I think this guy's older than me. And he's been around. He's been around as long. He goes, Howard Stern... And they, and they all yell. Howard Stern sucks, man, and you got to give me a chance because he sucks, and you might think I suck, but you've got to listen to me because, because, because you know maybe uh, maybe it's time for the new the new kind of show, Bubba Show. So I, I'm like sitting and listening to. It, I go, okay, you know maybe he is better than me. Let's hear what he's got. He's he's doing Kermit the Frog, I mean, singing Jesus about sodomy. <laughs> There's there's your man. There you go, buddy. There you go, Bubba. It's so weird because we were working out and 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 and, 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 and I listened to these guys bad mouth hour and I'm like, Does this bother? He goes, No. <laughs> I just want to hear music. Right. The, the, you know the guys. Yeah, enough of that. Because John goes, I'd be really mad. I go mad. I go. This, this guy's in, devoting an entire show to how bad I suck. But it was bad bits. It was bad like song parodies. Yeah, and, right. And, and then he's like, and, then, and the guy's saying how old Howard is. But this, but this guy's been in the business fifteen years. He's got to be the same age. <laughs> he's the same. He goes. I, know. I mean, he's been around for. We've been hearing that name for fifteen years. <laughs> And wow, and this tape is old. He's been around a long fucking time trying to make it into like uh, the New York market oh. and all that shit. You know, Jeez. it's one thing to succeed in uh, Tampa or Jacksonville. That's that's yeah, that's kind of impressive. But uh, mm. he never really made it in the big markets. No. But what's yeah, really somebody who's doing something different? <laughs> what's mind blowing is I'm sitting there working out and I'm hearing the Bubble the Love Sponge talk about how. I'm different. Wait till you hear my show. And then he's just do he's doing, you know, lesbian dating game yeah, and playing. Naked girls. <laughs> he's not even playing a good song parody. No, bad song parody. Bad song parody. And the guy's older than I am. Been hacking around all over the place. <laughs> well, that's the new thing. Howard's old. Listen to me. Hacking. Don't remind my age. <laughs> yeah. Howard's old. Listen to me. And you know what? You're old, too. <laughs> <laughs> just forget my age. <laughs> <laughs> You're not young man. Stupid. Uh, it's just so dumb. The whole business has gotten dumb. And you know what? I've moved on in my mind. Yeah. Uh, there Bubba you go, talks Bubba. talks like he is the wimpy kid on the playground hiding behind Howard. He can't even stand up for himself. He needs a team. What no. A why didn't you? Yeah. Why don't you just fucking talk and be honest and just, uh, if you don't like us, bash us for whatever reason. Be accurate. Don't fucking lie like, uh, like you did about us saying we w weren't for the merger. That's ridiculous and bullshit. And then just, you know, use your own merits to uh, to argue your points. Not look, I'm on Howard's team. Oh, <laughs> it's the my daddy can beat up your daddy fucking routine. 
You stink. They better, you fucking stink. They better never you know, ask me to be in the same room. As same them. room. You'll go there. You'll be in the same room. You'll smile and wave because everyone's a fucking faggot in this business, including you. Ugh. God damn. Go wear your fucking bedspread suit. <laughs> your big fucking pleated button tough fucking... <laughs> Fucking bedspread. <laughs> You're, what the fuck? How do you size that? California King, please. <laughs> it, it looked like one of those those thermal suits. You know, like when, like when people have to get really close to lava. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if I didn't know any better, I thought that was like a waterbed on the red carpet. Yeah, it was fucking... He was wearing a bedspread. He was wearing his waterbed. Oh, <laughs> And he just looked like, I'm a sharp-dressed man. I am getting the fuck out of here. Look at me. Yeah, I'm going to come rolling up. People are going to go, who's that? And other people go, oh, that's Bubba. No, you get out of the car and people go, holy shit, dude. What the fuck is that? Dude, that's some asshole jock. I, I forgot his name. But look, he looks like a bed. <laughs> Wow. Douchebag. So, Bubba, before we move on to what I'm seeing, which is just beyond amazing, and you guys got to see this, uh, uh, Bubba, I'm, I'm happy to know that we're still getting under your skin. It, it makes mm -hmm. my day. <laughs> makes my day. Yeah. There is a video that's on CNN. I'm sure if you do a little YouTube or uh, Google search, whatever the fuck, they got video. Oh, look how sad she looks. Yeah, she's a little upset. Who had come to take the dead moose away? They were able to get away unharmed. She looks like a unique gonna effort cry. to revive yeah. rare turtles. It is happening in Camp. Hey, Ruck, watch me get eaten by a bear. <laughs> <laughs> they got video of a grizzly bear killing and and taking a moose away yeah. so he could go eat it. And she was really yes. depressed after she saw that footage. I was starving. <laughs> <laughs> that video is amazing, no? Yeah. Where can people find it? I'm looking for it right now. Yeah, all right. Well, we'll turn you on to the video. I mean, you, you're you good at the search. I understand that. But uh, CNN just played it. Holy shit. That grizzly bear just dragging the moose into the woods mm -hmm. so he could eat it. All right, uh, quick break. We'll wake up Patrice, and we'll continue with the Opie and Anthony show. <laughs> Welcome back. Good morning, Patrice. I was just enjoying. <laughs> hmm. All right. What was that? I was trying to get my sandwich down. Oh. Yeah, I munched that. Patrice is so sleepy. I know. Go home. He had a no. <laughs> Go home. He had a, he had a, what, a long night? Long weekend? Yeah, it's been a long weekend for everybody. It has been. Um, I know. Speaking of which, <clears throat> do you mind if I get uh, pretty outrageous here with uh, uh -uh. something I'm about to read about you? Go ahead. I want your permission. I, I don't know what it is, but... It's going to be bad. Go uh -huh. ahead. All right. Stephen S. from Bayshore writes... Patrice is sleeping? Now's a great time to chain him down and ship him back to Skull Island. <laughs> oh, come on. I didn't know I was asleep. You, what, what? Wait a minute. All right. Hold on a minute. <clears throat> You've been out for a while. No. What did we do on the show? You were talking about um, uh, Bobby the... Um... <laughs> Bobby the Squeeze Toy. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, who's Bobby the Squeeze Toy? He's a he's he's a guy that works with um, Howard on uh, on Sirius Satellite Radio. All right, and Good. you called him a lot of fat things. Mm -hmm. And um, Ant Anthony called him some things about his his suit. The suit, and right? He said danger, warning, warning, danger. Right, okay. You remember that? Well, he was the uh, kind of conscious, semi-conscious thing you going call on. Him, you call him Fatty Fat McFatty. Right. And more fat, and mm -hmm. fuck him, and fat, and um, break. And how long do you think that took? That was almost an hour. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So I was there. 
I just even as no, I was I wasn't asleep though. <laughs> no, you're, <laughs> you're just in a Patrice relaxed asleep. state. I wasn't really. They're sleeping. all nodding their heads, <clears throat> Patrice. Of course they are. What are you gonna ask them? If, did Patrice fuck the floor? They're gonna nod yes. <laughs> <laughs> they don't count. I'm just. <laughs> I'm. Uh, I was there. Yeah, I just was waiting. I didn't have nothing to add. He knew everything, so All right. what are you gonna say? Yeah, Patrice, uh, we got the porno titles together for you. Mm -hmm. I'll give one to Amp. Ooh, Patrice it. came up with a great Did observation it. on the other yes. side, but we couldn't do it because you got to keep it, uh, you know, safe Kinda over clean, there. Yes. But basically, uh, with what's going on in the world, with political correctness, black versus white, all that crap. What'd you say, Patrice? I don't want to like. <laughs> It, it basically porn is the only place left for honest racism. And no more no <laughs> fucking they don't dance around anything anymore. Right. If you if you watch some of the titles, there's fantastic titles. <laughs> you want to read some of these? Sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. in the in the quote <clears throat> real world, you, you you'd stay away from the whole black white thing, but not in not in porn. Not man. in porn. Not for a second. And not only is it like they they challenge the the language. It's it's what they're doing too. It's right. like you know, right? You know, I, you, you ouch, nigger is you know. Would what, be, what, what can we do? Uh, we can't say the n word. No. We can't uh, make fun of Asians. No. What else, Anthony? That have they taken away from us? Um, uh, the oh, um, a uh, gay stuff. thing. A lot of gay references can't, can't be used. Right. Sure. All that stuff. All right. With that, Patrice. The first one is is a genius one called "Oh No, Whoa. There's a Negro in My Mom." <laughs> uh, Where's that? And it's of a guy um, that's supposed to be a son. Oh, okay. And a kind of older milf lady, kind of looks a little, a little like you know the Peg Bundy kind of lady, kind of hot with black hair. Yeah, she's all right. And here's the fantastic thing: there's a there's a um, black dude fucking her, but she's not paying attention to the fucking. She's mm. looking at the camera to take her picture as the oh no, there's right. a Negro for right. my wife lady. Right. And the guy is doing the um, the the, the, the home alone. <laughs> oh no, there's a Negro. The second one is oh no, there's a Negro fucking. There's a Negro in my wife. <laughs> in my wife. I guess it's part of the the whole oh no, there's a Negro series. <laughs> there's a Negro, this is oh, the oh no, there's a Negro series. Yeah. And uh, the word Negro is spelt out in bones, <laughs> which yeah. uh, I find very funny. Yes, absolutely. Oh, it's it's, it's hilarious. But it, the 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 fourth one is, uh, and this is by Griffin Cam Johnson. Mm -hmm. This is called "I Can't mm. Believe You Sucked a Negro." <laughs> right. And another one called Sharon's Negro Problem, with the title. Wait, wait, wait. The funny thing is, they list the Negroes in this film. He oh, got, it says the Negroes. Yeah, the Negroes, uh, and then it's uh, Lee Bang, Byron, Byron Long, Byron Long, who has a giant. And, you know, she shouldn't believe she sucked that guy's dick. It's yeah. a giant. Yeah. Guy De Silva, who's who's really should be retired by now, and a new guy called The Rock. Oh, and Delvin, Devlin. We so these these are kind of old school dudes, and okay. then um, the, old black cock. The bigger, the blacker, the better. Sharon has a Negro problem for four. <laughs> you can't stop him. You can only hope to contain him. <laughs> but it says on the box. <laughs> and then we, uh, then the guys came up with some more porno titles. Oh, it's delicious. Showing that it's alive and well. This racism in the porn world, anyway. Come drench black faces. Mm -hmm. I wish they had a box for that because I would love to see that. Sure. Uh, we got Kung Pao pussy. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I like the abominable black man. <laughs> That's a good one. The, in this in this day and age, where you're right, this is the last bastion I where mean, racism. I, I'm saying this is, uh, I, and, and this stems in my mind from the fact that um, you know the whole Don Imus thing, mm -hmm. that the whole thing of the, the, defending him back back when when it happened was, it's you think this is a this is you you're trying to stop white people from saying nigga. White people don't say nigga. No. It's like it's stopping me from being able to say what the fuck I want to say. Yeah. And now nobody under any circumstances over at the at CBS, no time can you say the N word ever under any how circumstance. Crazy is that? Under any contents, not even black people can say it if we wanted to. And how crazy is that? Uh it's really crazy. It makes no Which sense. Which was the ultimate plan in the goddamn beginning. Was like who the fuck says that? No one, but white people say it at home. Yeah, like black people say it out. 
So so this is the this is it. Porn is it. Porn is when you know. Yeah. Slant slant eye for the straight guy, which you know some it's a dude just fucking up Chinese. Oh yeah. Mommy culo grande, big Puerto Rican bitches, That's black power three. That tells you black pipe layers, pi black pipe layers, which is a I'm very familiar with porn. It's um it's my boy uh, Justin, Slayer. Justin Slayer and his friends. And they kind of travel around the, the world, and they just fucking give it to some white woman, which I should just tie Anthony up and make him watch. Yeah. And they just mm. pound their brains out. I mean, wow. Look, and this, these are the kind of th these these videos are not like the movies back in the day where it was there was a tinge of acting. Yeah. This is a real fucking, you know. Really. I mean, this well, is just. Can we get uh, some of that Oof. up there? And the thing that's that's I might actually have a copy on DVD. The the, the <laughs> thing, <clears throat> of course, why wouldn't we? Where porn took a turn, which mm -hmm. it, it the trend. Uh huh. Back in the day, I don't know if you're porn watchers, but oh, back yes. in, back in the day, it used to be uh, women were porn stars. Mm hmm Women like you know Vanessa Del Rio and this sure. one and that one. Last porn star left now is probably uh, your girl, but she's getting old now too. She's leaving. Uh, oh. Uh, the white girl everybody loves. Jenna? Jenna James. She, she left mm. already, I think. She is. So, yeah, so it's done. It used to be one woman fucking a bunch of nameless dicks. Now right. it's, it's one guy with a name fucking a lot of nameless women. Yeah. It's it's interesting. It's, yeah, it's these now, women just gagging and fucking just, puking on cocks. and Just arbitrary women that just yeah. show up. Big black dicks oriental slits. <laughs> That's... <laughs> What about bang white, white up that black ass? Yeah. What about bang that black bitch, white boy? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that sounds good right there. Wow. I mean, and where are did the say, civil rights movements on these titles here? Did he say uh, anal with an oriental slant? Oh, d d that's an actual <laughs> title. Something must be done about the horrible titles of the movie. How about Afro <laughs> Fuckfest? <laughs> Afro Fuckfest. <laughs> This is crazy. This is fucking crazy. Dark meat says it all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The Negro mm -hmm. and Mrs. Jones. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's like Jackass the movie. Okay. Afro American Black hair pie. So that's black girls without the shave and. Mm hmm. Come, I love cum drenched black faces. That's one I would want to see. But it's it's like it's there's no more back in the day. The Devil and Mrs. Jones didn't know what that was really. Oh about. Yeah, yeah. Debbie does Dallas. They put little stories to them, I think. Taboo. Yeah. You know, and now it's just... I don't like stories with porno. Well, back in the day, that was what it was used to... Now it's just like, I'm going to grab you by your hips and fuck you in your asshole, cunt. That's pretty much it. It's like... Two. First, it's a guy, girl, they're nude, or they get naked. Guy, a girl gives the guy a blowjob. Guy eats the chick's pussy. Then they start fucking. Then maybe fucks her in the ass. And then there's a money shot. You're not you know, interested in, in the story anymore. Yeah, uh, but, yeah, but, but like the they got to shake it up a little bit. But back in the day, the story was kind of cool when it was sort of believable. Then what? Then they just gave up on trying to make it believable, and that's when the story thing sucked. Mm. You know what I mean? I, you know something? I don't mind. Here's what they need more, more movies like. And this is what I think what the guys would like. Uh, a lot more movies with girls getting fucked, but I don't want to see a lot of the fucking guy. Bro. I don't like... You know, you ever tried jack into a fucking porn, and then you got to get through a few seconds of the guy's face going, oh, <laughs> yeah. oh, right. oh, oh, the guy's fuck face, and you're like holding your dick and going, oh, Christ. And the famous bob shot. <laughs> yeah, the not back not of many, balls. How many guys are a fan of the bob shot? The bob shot is the back of balls shot. It's uh, where the balls are swinging, <laughs> and he's fucking her from behind, That's and it's genius, the shot the from behind shot. the balls, the bob shot. I don't want to see that. I don't want to see a bell clapper fucking a, slapping a, back and forth. Was you a porn jerker? Uh, yeah, I used to fucking... It was like special occasion, though. If I had some time, you know, if uh, no one else was in the house, I'd pop a porn in, jack off a little bit there. Uh, it wouldn't take long. And then you wouldn't watch any after you're done fucking... Black meat, please. Oh, is this is this like black guys fucking white chicks? Well, it, oh yeah, the oh, description is, be is great. Abomination for me. Eight white sluts that love black cars. So, could you watch these cute little white girls get fucked by a black dude, or you can't even watch that? Yeah, why not, eh? Uh, what? What? White girls getting fucked by? Would that bother you? White girls getting fucked by black guys? In, in it's not my favorite type of porn. Believe me. 
Not my favorite type of anything. <laughs> What's not, your favorite porn? I actually uh, like um, uh, white guys ravaging black chicks. Really? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I'm into, uh, I think uh, they call it like amateur. But like real fucking, I like regular looking chicks kind of fucking getting Just, fucked. No, yeah. I don't like porn starry chicks. That's a good call for Ant, yeah. Yeah, I like amateur that stuff. Shit is I mean, that's way, way amateur way shit. Better. That's kind of cool. Looks like a regular it's room. reality. Yeah, stuff Even like that. You may see, uh, may see your daughter or your auntie, <laughs> auntie, <laughs> or your, your next auntie. door neighbor that you hope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just shit like that. Like I'm not into fucking ridiculous looking porn star chicks. They're, they're just uh, they they don't. Are you a fan of the? They don't uh, look hot at all. What is it called? The interactive uh, porn. Hi, I've been waiting all day for you. No. <laughs> That's the worst. Where the camera angle's supposed to look like you're fucking them. Also, it's like, well, come in here. Come here. Come oh, here. she's asking me to come in? Yeah. POV. She's... she's what is POV. It POV. Point of view? Yeah, point of view. It's yeah. POV. Oh, that that's is when the, the That's when the guy holds the camera. Yeah. yeah. But the, and just but that's, the whole... But that, that's now supposed to be you. And oh, then he oh, put, does he put here. the camera down, though, and he's getting blowjobs, so you see him getting his dick sucked, and it's supposed to be like you? Yeah. You gotta... yeah okay. Are you a porn guy, Steve? Oh, Steve is oh, am the I? ultimate porn guy. <laughs> I get meatloaf-sized boxes every I like me. all kinds of porn. Boys, men, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like the real stuff. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, is Steve gay? We don't know. No, I don't think Steve is gay. <laughs> no, we don't. From it. They tease you constantly, but yeah, I, I know. I don't. Yes, he has a. You know, he has a gay landlord's walk. But, but, <laughs> <laughs> what but, the fuck does that mean? <laughs> it's just he has a. He has a little stroll. He kind saunters. Of thing. Yeah, yeah, he saunters. But I mean, I don't I'm not in a hurry to get anywhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> gay landlord. Walk. Yeah, like somebody that just. That's I bad. tell you, my my sink is stopped up, and you come in with slippers, yeah. and you. Stand with like, like Mr. A, Furley, like a gay Superman stand with his hands on his <laughs> hips and just Dude. goes. I don't know. I guess I gotta get somebody to come in. I just, I just looked up at the TV and I was ready to say, uh -oh. I swear to God, I think CNN just lost their minds. Oh really? <laughs> yes. Okay. Because in the studio, uh, you know, a lot of people have seen it at this point. There's so many flat screens as like every news station possible, so we could be up on shit. And I look up and I see <laughs> kiss my ass four. Kiss my ass four. And hardcore stuff going on. Textbook Pussy Five. How can any guy not? This is what kills me. How can any guy with just countless numbers of stinking ass bitches not be able to get pussy? I don't. What? How, where are these girls coming from? Oh, 18, geez. 19. Midwest. Oh, this is bad. Huh? They hit them up before they turn 19 and 18 oh, years old. Christ. They get them when they're younger and then they sign them when they're 18 or 19. Wait, what's wrong, Ed? Oh, God. What is she doing? What's wrong? Oh, my yeah. God. It's white chicks just getting ravaged by black dick. Well, it's, and... it's black meat four, please. Yeah. Imagine the fucking. Imagine that chick's dad black just tips, looking in white going, clits. oh, my God. <laughs> Holy shit. Look at that. Oh. Uh, Oh, the guy can only get it halfway in. What the fuck is that about? God damn! I'm gonna ruck your dick, starring uh, Susie <laughs> ruck fucking <your> Chang. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! All right, let's let's listen to some of this dialogue too. Oh, Feature presentation. Going effort to help you make an informed choice oh, in the election. Oh, yeah. oh I was oh. gonna say, wow. <laughs> CNN has left. How does a black cock have to do? What does a black cock have to do with the election? Holy shit! Yeah, they're playing some hip hop. Like as a uh, got a fat cock there. Come on, come on, come on. Yes, I am Nika. Pretty much saw the whole movie. This what the intro? Yeah. <laughs> oh shit, that's gonna hurt. Wow. <laughs> this guy's sporting a fucking uh, baseball bat. Ha. Huh. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, uh, I feeds him a little bit. What do you think, Ant? Uh, uh, that was like the preview, but it was basically the whole fucking movie. Wow. That's reparations right there, if you ask me. <laughs> that, we're even. What? <laughs> we're even. That's reparations. Are you fucking kidding me? That was happening during slavery time. It just wasn't legal. <laughs> <laughs> now this guy can't get lynched for this. <laughs> <laughs> 
What's going on here? Wow. Why don't we explain this? Got Looks two like girls. she's petting a horse neck. <laughs> 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 that fucking thing is stretching it out. This is a great this is this is a great life to live, I think, if you just say Phew. Like you know that the rest of your life is gonna suck after this. <laughs> Dude, black guys got like an extra extra like bone in their what? I, I don't know. They got like an <laughs> they got like an extra part in their cock. What was that? It's an extra muscle or something. It's called more dick. <laughs> <laughs> uh yes. <laughs> Alley oop. But she has the the real um my pussy is wet um jump coming out. Yeah. See Anthony's familiar. Your dick is big enough to see extra things come out of the vagina, right, Anthony? Well, uh, he's a little, you know. Sometimes some stuff comes out, right? <laughs> <laughs> do you hit, wait, Blood organs. Do you hit the you hit the back end? Uh, we were talking about that the other day when you hit the back and feel well, like no, no. I'm asking, do you hit the back? You feel some shit in there. You hit the back. You can hit the cervix, yeah. I'm saying, yeah. do you hit? I, I, I've hit cervix, I'll be honest. On a regular basis? Um, Is there a pussy where the yeah, cervix was not hit? Uh, maybe if I'm not, you know, feeling it. Fully? Yeah, yeah if fully, I'm not you feeling hit the it. cervix. Son of a bitch. Yeah, you gotta hit the back wall every so often. Yeah, I know people do, but yeah. I wish. You never back walled it there, Patrice? Uh, my fingers. Where is it now? I can't believe <laughs> we've been listening to this for about 20 minutes. What? <laughs> yeah, are we doing a radio show? You fucking assholes. <laughs> we're I just can't believe this is somebody. There's people home just listening to this. <laughs> <laughs> you do forget, don't you? Well, oh, look, man. God. The guy got mayo on there. The piece of oatmeal. Where is it now? Oh boy, that can't taste good. No. Oh God, it's got it. There's just so much white shit all over. Maybe you just uh, can't see that on white guys. Oh shit, he's flirting with you. You can't oh, see God. it like just like you can't see tattoos on black guys. Yeah, like, maybe yeah. that's it. <laughs> he can't see pussy. There's just, just white, white shit there. all over his dick. <laughs> she spit right on her asshole. Oh, that so that's got to be next. <laughs> and, 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 and you're like, oh, dude, I can see the plot already. <laughs> yeah, I, I know what's coming next. I know how this is going to end. She's this is, getting ass fucked. This is poorly written. She doesn't look very thrilled. No. I came to America to uh, <laughs> get the education, maybe go into a nursing school, and now Big Negro fuck me an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Sisterhood of the Traveling Black Cock. Oh. <laughs> yes, everyone tells a story. Yeah. Uh, no, don't no, move that no, up. Come on, fast forward. He want to see. On? It fast forward to the yeah. to where she to where everyone tells her it's yeah. over. Oh, he's got a, oh, he's got oh, two right, fingers right, in right, her right, ass. All right, this is all the right. He two fingers in her asshole. ass. All right, this guy's oh, getting Oh boy, ready. he's getting ready to dive in. Oh shit. Oh boy. Oh, this ain't going to be good. Oh, yeah. oh he's stretching oh, it out. He's getting shit. ready. Yeah, he knows what he's got to do to get that fucker in there. He's good. stretching it open. Oh no. This can't oh, be. Oh no. Here it goes, folks. This, this part of the movie called Hit this is here. Take this. Oh, here's, your, here's your slavery. Oh <laughs> shit. Wow. <laughs> That's that move. God damn, <laughs> damn it. Here's your slavery, here's your buddy. Sla uh, diapers for the rest of your life. Yeah, this is this is called Hey, you brought us over. <laughs> oh you, god damn. Did, did you see how big my dick was then? <laughs> Oh, that's uh, wow! She's gaping. Yeah, she. Uh... All right, we're fast forwarding. <laughs> oh, oh, oh! God damn! <laughs> Holy shit! Anyone else get getting the urge to sing opera? Because all you see is <laughs> yeah, her asshole looks like. <laughs> A little on top. Yeah, you got to get all the positions in before the Jesus. big money shot. All right, we're fast forwarding. This is the longest fuck scene in history. No yeah, kidding, man. This is Godfather 3 of fucking it. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Now he's just piling them up. On oh, here we go. Oh, Whoa. shit. A little for you. Wow. Oh, damn. All right. 
close that left eye. You fucking. You think the director was pissed off that he shot the load over her head like that? No, nah, the director. Wasn't. No, that was a great one. I think that was a one taker with that line right over her eye. Yeah. Yeah. Can't open it. She has to guess where that giant dick is. That's uh, a proud moment. <laughs> proud moment for the white race right there. <laughs> Gotta tell you. Just getting a load of jizz right hey, in her eyeball. It was your fucking fault. Mm. Now, if you elect Obama, no more of these videos. <laughs> That's he, it. He promises. Hey, uh, I know we want to move on, but there's two. Booby Man, who's always good for one in Brooklyn, he writes, Think that is bad. Look up Coxzilla. And then he writes, Why do I know this? And then you got Greg in Philly. He writes, uh, you guys have to go to awnigga.com. The guy sticks his nuts in a chick's ass and his dick in the pussy. Yeah. Oh. What? <laughs> Can you go there? I don't don't, don't go there. <laughs> <laughs> Can you go there? How yeah, do you do that? Me, uh, I'm trying to think a... how to do that. Even it, I don't think you can do that in animation. I don't know. That's why. I, don't, I, I think that's something I've never seen right there. Yeah, that's a... Uh, that would be that's a new. Help. That would be a hell of a trick. Yeah, it's new. Can we go there? Mm-hmm. All right, we're going to check it out real fast. Yes. What? This right here? These yeah, bitches suck at this. Maybe they got it. Hopefully they got it uh, spelled right. I don't know. We'll find it. I'm sure. Oh, the fancy no. spelling and we'll... Uh, They're corny. Oh, jeez. Fake. Yeah, yeah. The fucking... Oh, I hate fake bitches. They're this is corny. terrible now. They're mm. corny. These two are corny. The chick from that 70s show is going to get ravaged by a black guy. You know, it's funny, because if this is the video that I'm thinking about, we were actually just talking about it on the way over from TV. Oh, really? Oh, really? Yeah, get it up on the big screen. Get it up, get it up there for the fine people on the bleachers. All right, hang on a sec. I want to thank these guys for coming out today. We're a bit tired from the weekend, the big uh, comedy show. That was a, yes. a success for the most part. Of course. I do so want to acknowledge that. The big, yeah. That um, yeah. got a little awkward. Can we yeah. go full screen on this motherfucker? Yeah, it's not loading, unfortunately. Yeah, loading. We might have gave out the URL a little too soon. I could probably find it. I'm pretty sure I know which one this is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys are pros. You gotta love that. Have you seen this? Yeah. If it's the one I'm thinking You've of, you seen yeah. it? Yeah. It's, uh... It's infamously called the the booyah video <laughs> because he says booyah at one point in oh, there. Oh really? But uh, yeah, this is video. If the, if if it's what I'm thinking of of the uh, the act that's typically known as the dog in a bathtub. Yeah, here it is. All right, let's go. <laughs> it looks like it. He's shoving his balls into her uh, asshole. What? He's trying. He's trying to get his balls. He's really squeezing them tight. And uh, there's no way he's gonna get that in there. Ow, that that's gotta hurt. How do guys have no nerves in their balls? Well, you can shove it in there. That's right. Oh man, freak that bitch out, man. Freak that bitch out, Tom. Oh, nigga, asshole. Nigga, nutsack in the asshole. Nigga, I don't know if I can just be like, that's my boy. Wait, wait. What? 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 Nuts in the ass, in the pussy. Uh huh. Use a nasty girl, like Yeah, but clown. Nuts in the ass, in the pussy. Oh shit. Hell what? Now I'm finna go try this at home. He's got his balls in her ass. How you like that? That house should just be wiped with a fucking Tech Nine. Oh my God. Just wipe the whole house. Dude, his balls are completely in her asshole. You getting BP in any goddamn way. Look at that asshole. I don't even want to let my nuts out. Yeah. God damn. Yeah. I like the guy who's just going, Nick. 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 They don't pop out? No, I guess this must be the short version. Oh, oh too bad. All I gotta say to white people is, aha. Aha. You know what? With, uh, after seeing that, it's official. They've done everything they could possibly do in porn. Yeah. Yeah, but you gotta watch the whole thing because the ending is really what makes it. Why? Oh, what does he do? Well, I, I think yeah. Travis just linked me to. Is the full video? Is the full version? Oh, you don't want to ruin it. All right, don't ruin oh, it's it. the quick clip. Yeah. Okay. But it'll have the ending we want. Yeah. All right. Hold on. There's the quick clip. Can you go full Wait. screen on this? Actually, no. On this, I don't think I can. All right. Here, here we go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 
Booyah! Booyah! You could actually hear the nuts come out of her ass. Yeah. Yeah, wait. Do it again. I want to hear that. You actually hear him pop. Listen. <laughs> vacuum packed. <laughs> that was like a vacuum seal opening up. And that wasn't no bullshit ass impressed by his boys. They were like, oh, shit. Oh, damn. Wow. Booyah. Booyah. <laughs> Booyah. <laughs> Booyah. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh, there you God. go. We're still, oh, we're still right. cool in porn. Nigga. If you guys that want right. one more. Dude, if you call the regular show tomorrow, <laughs> regular radio, you got to end your call with Booyah. Booyah. <laughs> and we'll all be chuckling because we know what it means. Booyah. What, uh, what do you got, Danny? Well, it's uh, one of the greatest porn bloopers of all time because okay. it kept looking like in, in, the, in the DVD that you guys were watching, like he almost went into, into the butt, but he, he didn't. And it was uh -huh. some scary moments there. What? This what in the butt. <clears throat> what? What? In is the butt. He's going for the regular place and just brings it on home by accident. And oh. uh, one thing to look out for is her leg twitching like a dying animal <laughs> uh, during the impact. <laughs> it's been floating around the web for a while. This one's currently on my uh, E-Fucked. Right. Like every... It's called Sorry Wrong Hole. Degenerate video I watch is on. Mm. All right. Nice. Yes. Um, nice so what's the most sensitive part of your body? I think the part of your body. <laughs> Wait, what? What are you talking about? <laughs> What's that? More sensitive than that. Mm -hmm. I can believe we can find something yeah. more sensitive than that. She's getting railed from behind. What? Oh. Watch this. Oh. <laughs> Her leg is twitching. <laughs> Holy That's shit. Watch. Dude, he buried wow, it. he buried it. He's screaming. <laughs> that was a total accident, but she's okay. Jesus Christ. Where the fuck can you find that? Wow. That's on, uh, that's on e fucked spelled E-F-U-K-T dot com. It's titled Sorry Wrong Hole. Holy it's probably the, the, the best oopsie ever. Wow, he buried it. Oh, and her leg just starts going. <laughs> Twitching. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that funny? Uh, she did we, start twitching. Uh, <laughs> why don't we do line of the day and get the fuck out of here? Right, right. <laughs> right, right. Booyah! Line of the day, sponsored by Carbonite.com. Carbonite backs up your computer hard drive, so you never have to worry about losing any of your files. Check it out at Carbonite.com, promo code XM. We uh, start with the first runner-up line of the day. This fucking guy has to do two radio shows a day. We do one long one. He has to do... I believe he's on in mornings, and then he has to do afternoons every fucking day. Yeah, takes a few bucks to hold on to a hot chick, doesn't it, fatty? <laughs> believe me, I know. <laughs> I heard that. You heard that? I was there. I was there. You were sleeping, though. No, I was there. All right. Patrice did a great job, you guys. Let's hear it for Patrice. He's going to be at the Punchline this coming weekend? Yeah. Punchline in San Francisco. Thursday, Friday, Saturday this yeah, week? Yeah, very good. Uh, we got sure a lot of listeners out there. We got a lot of listeners in that area. You should have a few fans out there from, yeah, the, you from this show. Yeah. Uh, another runner-up line of the day. No. What did we do on the show? You was talking about um, uh, Bobby the um, <laughs> Bobby the squeeze toy. Fucking <laughs> 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 <I can't> Patrice <laughs> wakes up and he's instantly funny. Uh, another runner-up line of the day. We did 14 or 15, I believe, of those things, and uh, we did good. Unless you hold a comedy draft. Well, <laughs> eh, maybe we come up with some new idea. Maybe we all just go camping. <laughs> <laughs> we should just go camping. Yeah. Let's have a beach day. I like the idea of beach day. Just a beach day. Mm -hmm. We take over a beach somewhere. We don't do the show. We all uh, skip work. We get mm -hmm. there at, uh, what, like 9 or so, but, so you can still get in. And, we'll take uh, over a beach for a day. Take over a beach. Why don't hang we do out. that? Why don't we do like that? It. Beach day. Before the end of, uh, end of the summer. Bikini Bruds. Sam has Good, to plug beautiful girls. WWE promo. What? Sam. WWE promo? What's this, this about? Sam. Sam's always contest. involved with them. What? Hmm. We're doing a contest. Are we? Yeah. What's the contest? Somebody is going to get to win a trip to SummerSlam. Nice. This week. 
Uh, what? So When's SummerSlam? It's, uh, I think, the 17th of August. What? I'm not kidding. But you have to create a wrestling character and then do a promo. Oh, boy. It's going to be great. And you have to cut a wrestling promo. What? About either Sam or E-Rock. They're fighting Sam or E-Rock? Yes. As they're like, all right, so you come up with a fake wrestling character. All right, I'm with you. Right. And you're now in a big match between either Sam or E-Rock. Right. Oh, and that's kind of cool. Right. And then you e exactly. That actually might work. And then email a promo to me. My email address is sam at opianthony.com. I'm going to grab you by yeah. your dry hair. <laughs> <laughs> Patrice is um, going to win a trip to SummerSlam. Uh, comb your face because it's hairy and it bothers me. <laughs> Hoo yeah! Booyah! Then like Booyah! Booyah! <laughs> I'm going to dip my balls right in your nose and fuck your eyes. Booyah! Booyah! <laughs> Booyah! <laughs> Booyah! <laughs> Like the fucking well, uh, that when his balls came out of there, it sounded like when they <laughs> opened up the fucking the tomb in uh, I know what you're Raiders. About. Yeah, there you go. when they slid that big rock away. <laughs> <laughs> booyah! Booyah! I didn't get a booyah out of you. Booyah! All right. Oh yeah. So what do they do? They send it to your email address. Yeah, send it to Sam at opianthony.com, and then the best ones. But Sam, you get a lot of uh, email. You you want them to send cockpit? <laughs> no, <laughs> wrestling ah. promos, not cockpit. So you know it's for the contest. Yeah. No, no. Cock How are you gonna know if it's for the contest? If you could just have it, like in the subject line. You could write WWE contest. Something All right. Like that. So and then when you open it up, you'll be surprised when you see the cockpit. No, so. no cockpit. <laughs> That's brilliant, Sam. No. Fucking yeah. brilliant. Yeah. All right. And then, uh, be on to that's brilliant no i'm not after <laughs> subject cockpicks. line wwe contest open it up cockpit no wrestling promo. brilliant right. mother fucking I'm gonna brilliant. choke you out you albino <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but the top few get to come into the studio on friday to perform their promos live and in character well when you mean live you mean live because they're going to be here but not live on air right because that'd be crazy live on the air how about you do it in the back <sighs> office well and then you decide then you come in here and tell and us what choke you around you. <laughs> can we do like one on the air uh, uh, grab you no. around your transvestite throat <laughs> no. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. well all right then maybe they'll do it like outside and then we'll talk about it for like five minutes who it's you and, and who e-rock yeah e -Rock. that are that the promos yeah all right. It's not a bad idea because there's a lot of E Rock jokes there. Yeah. Mayo and Ooh. all that crap. And bad breath. So they come up with a wrestling character and then they got to make believe they're fighting either you or E Rock. Mm -hmm. And then they cut what's called a promo on the base. Right. All right, cool. And the best one gets to go to SummerSlam. And what's the email again? Sam at opianthony.com. Here's your line mm. of the day Here comes Line of the day. Line of the day. I have a character that can fight E Rock. His name is Cholesterol. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> I thought this was going to be a bit hacky. I'm not going to lie to you, but after after that fine and some feedback from John of Virginia, I think this has potential. We I'm Cholesterol, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, E Rock. <laughs> Very good. All right, line of the day. Here, wait. Wow, <laughs> that's that's kind of powerful. <laughs> Here huh? comes light of the day, light of the day, light of the day. They got like an extra part in their cock. What was that? It's an extra muscle or something. It's called more dick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Booyah! 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 The big booyah goes out to Patrice O'Neill today. Booyah. Punchline, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday in San Francisco. PatriceO'Neill.com. What else, Patrice? Uh, nothing. Thanks for having me, sir. Appreciate it. And you, you sort of had fun at the virus show Saturday? I fucking absolutely did. Yeah. And no bullshit. The, 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 mm -hmm. the hour before you go on... Is is taxing, but the rest of the time hanging out yeah. from six six o'clock to twelve thirty is beautiful. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> and this year we ran like animals from the signing. Oh, I we know. We still went out to say hi, but I w I will say, uh, you completely left with your girlfriend's horrible family, and <laughs> and this young man stayed and fucking was extended his stay a little longer. I saw him over there. It was just me. 
him, me, Opie, and uh, I think Bobby. Bobby, you stayed out there. Stayed for a while? out there for a while. But I did mine beforehand. I got there at like one or two. I got there at two o'clock in the afternoon. What? And I was in the parking lot. Hanging out, tailgating with well, people. Well, let me apologize for so I was you doing being before. a piece of shit. I'm See, sorry. I got the pre-drunks, and you got the post-drunks. Post yeah, so. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll apologize. I got there my, early. I, I got in I a lot were, earlier than I, I, I was going to. I was a douchebag, which nah. is my favorite word, y'all say. I know, a douche. Douche. And I, I apologize. And I think uh, a lot of them stayed in so... Um, uh, merchandise and stuff too. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, movie so. man from Brooklyn. You can't handle me in the ring. I'm slim fast. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was an E Rock slam. Yeah, hey, no. Don't look at no, me with these pressure to laugh. That was funny. Yeah, why didn't you give Booby Man some love on that line? <laughs> the they, fuck? They're done. Now they know how it feels. They came in for a half hour and they're already tired. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't have to be funny. <laughs> All right, guys, it was fun today. We'll see you tomorrow. Later.